for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip with the Mad Cheese as always. Got a full breakdown for you guys today. Today I'm going to be going over the only defense that I did all year, which is the Miami Dolphins slash New York Giants. This is without a doubt the best playbook in the game, in my opinion. And this is pretty much every single play that I put out this entire year, all condensed into one video. If you guys want to see more full breakdown videos, I have uh, links in the description for some of the ones I've done in the previous months. I do one every month. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section what book you'd like to see next month, because next month is probably going to me in office. I'm thinking maybe Packers. Other than that, if you guys want to check out my ebooks, I have links in the description below for them as well. The Dolphins ebook that I'm doing right now still has additional plays in that that won't be in this video. So check that out. Link in the description below. Other than that, it's going to get right into the video. Formation is the 4-3 even 6-1. Like I said, I've been on this since last year. I ran this blitz a million times. The best I'm going to show you guys today. A million times out of my Kansas City Chiefs defensive ebook. I'm not in the Chiefs anymore. When I switched ebooks, when I switched defensive books this year, it was important for me that whatever book I chose had the 4-3 in it and I didn't know it was going to suddenly become like a meta formation like all the all the pros are running uh, but like I said I'm going to show you guys how I've been running it and I'm going to show you guys how they run it you guys can figure out which one's better you can, it's up to you I personally like the style that I run it because I've been running for so long I'm going to keep running it this way uh, it's a little bit more of a setup than the pros but ultimately uh, I just like what it gives me so the play that I'm going to show you guys and this is the one thing that I probably took away from watching the pros I'm like yeah I probably should have been running that coverage typically I used to run it out of the cover four quarter which is not a great defense. I just liked how it essentially uh, covered mid-range really well. But I started messing around with the coverage that I saw a lot of pros using. And cover two is a lot better this year. So I started running cover two, and obviously you can see there's a huge difference in average. I love cover two. This year, cover two to me is the better coverage, and I probably shouldn't run inside of cover two a lot, lo a lot sooner. So that's the play I'm going to show you guys today: the cover two. But I still like some of the other coverages, especially the man coverage. I have a breakdown of these two plays. I will have links in the description for the, the essentially the rest of the scheme. But if you guys want to see more Woo! out of this scheme, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. I'll, I'll do a full scheme of this defense in the future if you guys want to see that. So let's go ahead and let's pick that cover two. On the defensive side, we're going to go three different levels here. We're going to just pick multiple different plays. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick the level sail to start. Then I'm going to pick the PA crossers where I'm going to block the running back. Then I'm going to pick a third play where, you know, I'm just going to continuously add to the blocking to the point where you can see this play is still going to be successful. So let's go and let's pick the level sail just to show you. A lot of people run plays where there's no blocking back. As always, got to do my plug for my coin sponsors, AOEH.com. You guys don't know how much they do for me. I know how much they do for you because I get a lot of comments saying that you guys have bought coins from them. Uh, and I appreciate that too, by the way. I appreciate the support from all the people that buy coins through my coin sponsor because it does support this channel. But as always, if you guys want to support this channel and you need coins for your mud team, check them out. Link in the description below. It's discount code MONEY. You get 3% off. It's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. So I appreciate you guys for hooking me up with that. Now, as far as this defense goes, like I said, there's, there's multiple ways to run this. I'm show you the way that I've been doing it up to a year. Uh, it might be a little bit of a longer setup, but to me, it's a little bit more consistent when it comes to run plays, especially uh, because there's not as much gaps, uh, but it's a really good pressure package. So without a doubt, easiest way to do this play. I'm going to do my, my, my Y triangle to bring up my coverage adjustments. Then I'm going to base a line and then I'm going to do it again, base a line and show blitz. Uh, and that brings all the, uh, the, the, the defenders down. I can also uh, show blitz again to back these guys off, uh, which I think is just fine because ultimately I find that hard flatting on the blitz like this is going to make the most sense so this is pretty much going to be the base then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use my d-pad to the left and down to pinch that defensive line then i'm going to go the opposite direction d-pad and to the right and down to uh, basically blitz all my linebackers. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is D-pad to left and up to slant outside. I'll have a setup in the description because I know that's a lot. Now there, I didn't even get to do everything, but you can see this, I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't even do the full setup right, and I still got the sack. Obviously, I mean, there's only five blockers, so that plays a big part. But let's go to the replay, because like I said, I didn't even do everything I was supposed to be doing, but you could see the alignment. The fact that I'm hard flying, the fact that these safeties are playing a little bit closer to the box than normal, it's going to make it to the point where they get involved in early routes maybe a little bit sooner than normal 
but ultimately I did hard flat so even though these guys are backed off they will play down to the point where they're going to get in the way of the, uh, the the short check and releases now as far as the the, the blitz goes like I said I want to typically be down over the center but you can see once again we have an additional additional guy sprinting in so nobody's going to really get open in the amount of time needed so basically it's a six on five which is pretty obvious but the purpose of this and be showing this in the replay is ultimately this alignment this spread this angle is why these guys will basically sprint in past anybody uh, as you can see this just they're just going to take a an instant path to the quarterback that's something that i feel that my setup gives that the, maybe the the pro setup doesn't necessarily give so first we'll do it with a play action running back which will be the pa crossers it's the exact same setup although i already kind of messed it up but boom we got it right there like i said we're just going to basically pinch the defensive line and slant them out then we're just going to blitz all and guess pass i didn't really mention there uh so it's a really quick setup it's really not that long if you're used to doing it like i said i've been doing it for over a year i could do it with a blindfold on so then i really have two options now, number one this is a play action play so the running back is going to stay in and block but i find that the best way to get pressure on a play like this and the majority of these plays is going to be taking this guy here whoever's over the running back and bring him in this is going to be my user i bring him into the line because i want this offensive line to shift in my direction so basically the path to the around the running back is going to be quickest from this defensive end the op the guy opposite the running back because the play axe is basically going to take him out of the play and me being on this side basically gives me the opportunity to basically just drop back right away or cover the running back if i want to you know if i hard flat or whatever i want to do whatever i decide to do this gives me an option to basically be the center of the field or to be um you know like i said take away the running back or whoever so i'm going to stay over this tackle for just a second then basically drop back and you can see the guy just gets in free which is something that i put out in my previous schemes now i can get heat off of both both sides it really just depends on you know what I decide to do as far as who I decide to use her so we're gonna do our setup one more time and then I'm just gonna bring this guy down this time I'll bring him down over the center and you're gonna see both sides are gonna come off off the off the edge on both sides so you can see the running back doesn't have a shot I mean that's just like stealing so we're going to pick that play again now I'm gonna pick a play where uh, I have um, you know, at least a running back blocking with no play action at all. I don't want no play action. It's like right here, the inside cross. So we're going to have a six on six now. As you can see, that's my setup. I mean, that's how quick it takes me to do it. That was like a half a second. I didn't really, I know, I, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. And, my, and for people that have been watching, if you've been doing this since last year with me, then you definitely have, uh, you know, an advantage. You should be able to get that setup in pretty quick. But like I said, there's a couple different ways I can do it. Come down right over the center, basically just, you know, hold this center for a second sometimes i can do it long enough to hold the running back you can see boom we just have guy flying off the edge even with the running back blocking he ended up blocking nobody now this is also something that i saw in another breakdown where essentially uh lining up just to the left of the center can help and i think that in this particular instance it helped to keep the running back forward because i think that they he thought i was going to a gap but ultimately that's really an important part of this when getting uh the pressure off the opposite side of the running back is you do have to basically come down to this gap and like i said i don't have to engage but i basically just have to you know hold that spot for a, for long enough for a blocker to to, to notice me so we're going to do that again like i said i really easy set up I said most important part is definitely guessing blitz and definitely zoning all, which I didn't even do there. But like I said, for whatever reason, I, I hear that it helps to have your arrow pointing on the opposite end of the tight end. And I'll go ahead and I'll do it the other way and we'll see what happens. Like I said, this here, let's see if we get the, the blitzer off the other side. As you can see, it didn't really matter. We get the same blitzer off the same edge. So that's something which I'm not 100% sure if it matters. Like I said, it's nothing that I ever really messed with before. But we have a six on six. Just got to make sure we get everybody in the position here and we have a very easy play like i said i got to come down right into this guy you can see he's still peeling off and we're still getting a free runner pretty much every single time so very easy blitz to set up and like i said it's the same as the blitz that i showed i showed a blitz earlier a version of this earlier this year and i showed it last year it's the exact same setup but ultimately i feel like the cover two is probably much better coverage now one of the things that i like about my setup that i think uh, I'm not sure if you can do this out of the pro setup, but you can actually shoot a lot of gaps when it comes to run plays. So let's go ahead and let's pick that play one more time. We're going to go ahead. We're just going to go, I guess we'll just go with an inside zone um, because that's probably the most common. So we'll pick that. So real easy setup, at least for me. I know a lot of people are gonna, probably going to struggle with this at first, but you can shoot gaps with this, which is basically you just stand back right at about the position to give you. And then you can see how I can basically just run across and take people out. So basically, that's one of the reasons that I like this setup. A lot of people don't know that you can, uh, 
you know, I don't know if you can do that with the pro setup. I know I can do it with this setup. I just don't get too close to the line. And then basically just boom, just get right inside and you can take out run plays, especially popular run plays like the inside zone. So like I said, that's pretty much my setups and how I've been using it. I'm going to show you guys the pro setup because like I said, that's something that, you know, that's kind of the purpose of me doing this video in the first place is because I noticed a lot of pros are using this play. So let's go and let's pick that. So my understanding of how the pro players are doing this is they're basically uh, shifting their defense towards the tight end. Only You only have to do that apparently if there is a tight end on the field. I don't know if you have to do that otherwise, but typically that's something that you, you don't necessarily have to do. The rest of the steps are pretty much the same. That's the only defensive line shift that they make. But as far as blitzing all the linebackers, as far as slanting your defensive line outside, these things are all parts that I showed. Guessing pass obviously helps. And then bringing this guy down over the center is also important. I did see a video where a guy even went as far as to say that where this arrow points is important, which I'm not 100% sure is true or not. But ultimately, that's really the only difference. Now, when I look at this, I see a little bit of opportunity when it comes to run gaps. As you see there, I actually get sucked in. And the blitz got picked up. So like I said, that's not my set up uh maybe there's a step that i didn't necessarily get but ultimately you could see how you know to me like i said this is something that uh i've been running uh, a different way for a very long time i don't want to say that my way is the right way uh, or anything like that but i'm just showing you how i saw it be run from a, a more of a pro perspective and you know this is something where maybe i just have to pull this guard a little or this center a little bit better so let's go and let's do that again like I said, i'm coming down the gap a little bit more you can see we definitely got a free rusher there uh, as he gets it off to the drag pretty quickly there's two plays that i like to use in this formation there's the sam will blitz which you can see right there i've called 35 times and i'll average allowing 5.3 yards a play which to me is an amazing amount of allowance especially because these defenses get me in a lot of turnovers that's really part of the issue is you don't necessarily have to uh, stuff them every time you get the ball but if you're getting sacks or you're getting turnovers you're gonna get stops so that's at the end of the day what these defenses are about then you have the cover four quarters. You can see how much I mix them. I don't use one play more than the other. These two are meant to be used together to rotate them in and out. They're gonna look the same, so the idea is to confuse your opponent and get some easy turnovers. So they're both in the audibles already. Uh, we have the cover four quarters and Samuel Blitz right here. There's not a ton of great plays here. There's really only two that I use. Maybe I'll throw in some cover two man every once in a while, but realistically, if I'm calling this formation, it's really gonna be only these two plays. The only thing I forgot to mention is before you uh, pick the play, make sure that you hit Y slash triangle then you're going to want to substitute um, your fastest linebackers at these outside spots. Obviously, you want speed everywhere, but you're going to want to make sure that you have your fastest linebackers at the two edge spots because they're going to get the majority of the pressure and you're also going to be using one of them. So let's go ahead and let's pick that play, the Sam Will Blitz. And before I get into the video, as always, I just want to let you guys know this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get coins for your MUT team and you want to support my channel at the same time, check them out. Link in the description below and you discount code MONEY to get 3% off. So as far as the setup for this play goes, it really doesn't take a lot. All I'm going to do is hit the D-pad to the left and then down, which is going to pinch my defensive line, then D-pad to the left and up to slant them outside. Then I'm going to blitz all my linebackers, or I can just manually blitz Robert since I'm on him. Uh, and the last step would be to spread your linebackers, which this last step you don't necessarily have to do, but it's something that you can do. You can see they get out much further. It's going to help with run defense. It's going to help get them off the edge. The last step, I typically like to bring this guy in here and basically just guess pass. Just bring this guy in, hug him right up against his defensive end because this is going to shift the defensive line the way that that outside linebacker on the other side gets off free, which is what I want. So I'm gonna basically you know, drop back right into these receivers, try to take away any drags, any uh, short routes because typically that's what people are gonna have to do because of the pressure. Or if the running back goes down a flat, I have to follow him. So those are pretty much gonna be the only routes you're gonna see against a defense like this because the pressure is so quick. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Like I said, I just have to make sure that I get out on this flat. And like I said, you, I mean, you're going to give up things like that. That's a five yard out. That's why you have to use the other play as well. But ultimately, this is going to be, um, you know, pretty good defense. That's nothing. There's not a lot of defense, not man coverage that's going to beat that five yard out. So that's just going to happen. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I'm going to play like this when we don't have a shotgun and we don't have one player um, going in any, you know, we don't have a, a formation that's giving away where the plays might possibly go. I'm just going to bring Roe down and user him. And once again, if the running back, uh, you know, whoever's using the running back basically would be the read on this play. And if the running back um, gets off, then you can see right there. I mean, that's, you know, a formation like that, there's a lot of blocking. It's not necessarily going to scream in. 
I'm typically going to get these type of screamers uh, when you uh, basically, you know, see like a, like a shotgun like this. This is really a good shotgun defense, even though it doesn't seem like it. So once again, we're going to do the exact same setup. We want this guy coming opposite the running back. So we're going to bring this guy in and we're going to basically use him the second the play starts. It's really that simple. Hopefully we get a good look here that I can get some pressure because this is a very high pressure package defense. So you can see we're having very tight coverage as he knocks the ball out there. Um, not quite getting the pressure that we're expecting yet, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna, you know, like I said, you want to just make sure that the, uh, the 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 guy coming off the running backs, the opposite running back side, that's the most important part. So let's go and let's, like I said, we gotta take away his running back. You can see we get the free rusher. We're just the airtight coverage. You know, I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> we're getting we're getting airtight coverage, even though we're not necessarily getting a bunch of sacks. I'm gonna probably have to choose a gun formation here in a minute if I don't get a sack on this next play. So let's go and let's do it. Like I said, I'm gonna even though this is I'm gonna take the chances at the blitz because I'm really trying to get some sacks here. So we're gonna set this up like the blitz, even though I could also run it like the run defense. You can see, like I said, the run defense is stout. There's really not gonna be any lanes, especially against a draw like that. So we, we're gonna back out. We're gonna pick some random guns because I really find that this works best against gun plays. So random gun, like I said, the empty is the only issue. And we're gonna basically set up the same way. Like I said, this is, you wanna walk these guys down. You don't wanna press. You just want to walk them down. The outside guys are fine. I'm not worried about them. But it's the inside guys that uh, usually get beat or that your opponent's typically looking at anyway. So, like I said, bringing this guy in, we're just going to immediately drop back and see if we get the free rusher. He's going to have to get out quick. He just gets a little five yard dink and dunk. Like I said, this here, you, 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 these cornerbacks here, they do a fine job. There we go. Finally got that guy to come in. I don't know why the defense wasn't coming in. The cornerbacks do a, do, a, do a fine job on the outside. It's the inside ones you got to worry about. You can guess underneath if you really want to try to take away short stuff too. It does have some effect when it comes to man. Let's see right here, we had a we get the sack. We had a, a you know the running back was blocking. And if you look at all the the receivers once the uh, the sack happens, once you get the sack animation, nobody's open. I mean, you, you would have to throw the ball probably right around here, and then even then, the accuracy wouldn't be there. But it's so fast. Everybody's about five yards down the field, and nobody has any separation. So like this, uh, this is like I was saying here. This is the only uh, formation where you don't want to run this, but you can still run and have success. I would say the cup for quarters, you can't really run and have success. But this play here, you can run this and have success. I'm going to bring my guys down um, over their assignments again, although I messed this guy up. I don't know how I did that. But you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to just basically come in with either one of these guys it doesn't really matter because whoever you come in with the other guy is going to get off your opponent will start to recognize that over time they will start to do that i've had opponents still basically just try to sprint to the opposite direction immediately and run crossers and stuff like that that's typically what you're going to see so just be aware of that but since my faster guys on the other side anyway we're just going to bring this guy over and we're going to get it off the uh, off the strong side although realistically once again you know i want to go short side here so it might make more sense to do this because i don't necessarily want if i leave him out here he might get bumped off by the tight end. I want an instant sprint straight to the quarterback. So I'm going to guess pass to get that. And now we're going to go ahead. We're just going to come in real quick, close to the defensive end again. He said, plus this left tackle. Oh, we got a screenplay. Now that's a good call for that. <laughs> but you can see it's still didn't get anything. Man coverage stops screenplays really well. Let's do this once more. Like I said, this here, this is more the look that I want. And I'm going to basically come in with this guy. Whoever's over the running back, whoever's in front of the running back is typically the one that you want to do this with. Uh, because we, we want the, the running back to have a hard time. If he's going to go to a pass block, we want to have him a hard time. As you can see right there, he's getting sacked again by two guys this time. And the running back was on a pass block, but he had no idea what to do. So let's watch the replay. Like I said, this is the type of crazy pressure you're going to get. The running back, like I said, he was on a block. But he stayed in middle and took out the linebacker. And then for whatever reason, we had two guys getting off. Uh, which almost it looks like a stunt, the way this play plays out. But um, this is the guy that I expect to get off every time. Every, anyway, I don't really care about the rest. But you can see he just gets a straight sprint in. The running back, that's one of the reasons I like blitzing the middle linebackers. A lot of times the running back will wait for that A gap. And then you can see this guy is just getting a straight sprint. we got a 90 speed linebacker just spring straight to the QB. Now, once again, for him to get the ball off, who's open? Who's open in this scenario? There's nobody open. He could maybe throw that outside route. But once again, the accuracy is going to be trash. So the next play is going to be the cover for quarters. Like I said, this is probably my favorite run defense, but it's also a very good pass defense. I get a lot of takeaways with this as well. So the setup for this is much more involved, but you don't have to have run any setup at all. That's one of the things that I like about this defense. If I wanted to run a very vanilla base defense, uh, I could just do this. Just basically pinch my defensive line, slant them outside, just like the previous play. Uh, and that'll give me some good pressure. I mean, it's not a great
great defense when it comes to, um, you know, cover four is one of the better pass defenses, but I'd rather get the pressure. So what I could do here, once again, you want to walk these safeties down at the very least. Get them in front of their assignments and get them in a position where they can stop the run because they will do a good job of that. So like I said, if I have somebody running the ball a lot, I could easily do this. And you can see not a lot to uh, run, not inside or outside. He's pretty much there to take it away. That was the safety. That's the, the key. That's the secret to cover four run defense is these safeties as long as you don't guess pass, which I do like 90% of the time, uh, but I don't want to run his defense. If I don't guess pass, look how they play like linebackers and just fill robotically towards the ball. I mean, they basically are in sync. They're in unison here. They basically just walk down to the hole. He basically was in a position where he's like, look, buddy, you can stretch it outside, get nothing, or you can basically stick it inside and get nothing. And that's exactly what happens. So that's why cover four in pretty much any formation is one of the best run defenses. It's also one of the better pass defenses as well. So yeah, really easy setup. If you do this, uh, if you practice it a little bit, you should have no issues with that at all. I'm gonna play underneath too, because the pressure's gonna get in. So I'm gonna, playing underneath, they really play, look, see, flat route. You play underneath, takes it away, real simple. But one of the things I like, I mean, I really like this for run defense, but I also like the coverage. I really find like, the coverage you get from these uh, from cover fours and deep zones are some of the best zone coverages in the game. And then obviously um, the, the safeties play better in this coverage. I'm not sure it's necessarily the cornerbacks play better. I think in man, the cornerbacks probably play better. But in, as far as zone coverages go, the, the safeties play the best in the deep zone based off the fact that they play the run and stuff like that. Other than that, let's get right into the formation. The formation itself is the 3-4 odd. I've put out plays from just about every formation in this book so far this year. So if you guys want to check them out, I'll have links in the description below um, so you guys can find them easily. So if you check out the description, you'll have a whole slew of plays. And then like obviously, like I said, I have the ebook, which I have a ton of more plays in there. Now, if I had to pick a play that I would say is my favorite play in this formation, the one that I call the most, it would definitely be the pinch dog two press. To me, cover two is still one of the best uh, zone defenses when it comes to pass coverage in the game. And it's going to be a really, you know, a really good base defense for when it comes to the, the blitz that I'm going to throw at people. So that's definitely number one uh, then you also have the pinch dog three which you can see is pretty much the exact same thing it's the exact same defensive front alignment the exact same blitz it just changes coverage now the pinch dog three is going to have its strengths and its weaknesses it's going to be weaker outside against the run than the pinch dog two press but it's going to be better against inside runs than the pinch dog two press because you have a box safety so that's the game you're gonna have to play if your opponent you're really gonna guess between these two plays the exact same setup but you have different strengths and different weaknesses between the two plays neither one of these plays though is a really great run defense which is why i'll give you guys two more options me personally i run a lot of cover four quarters i find that cover four quarters is one of the best run defenses in the game especially if people are running up the middle but i also find that if you run cover four quarters it's just a slightly better pass defense for short to intermediate routes which is something that I think you're going to run into based off of the blitz that I'm going to show you guys. So that would be my favorite play, but a lot of people also like to run cover for a drop. This one here, it's probably pretty similar when it comes to the run defense as far as effectiveness, but it's going to be a lot better for, you know, deep passing. So that's really, once again, you have your short intermediate passing defense, and then you have your, um, you know, deep passing defense, but they're both very good run defenses. These are the two best run defenses in this package, and then these are going to be the two best pass defenses in this package. Now, as always, this video is brought to you but my coin sponsors are AOEH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support this channel at the same time, all you have to do is check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEY to get 3% off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. Now, as far as this setup goes, um, number one, you're going to want to change your... Uh, your defensive uh, cornerbacks and linebackers and safeties and all that stuff. You're going to show blitz baseline, show blitz. That's basically going to bring all these linebackers down and basically create a seven-man front. Now, from here, you don't really have to make any adjustments at all. I could leave this just like this, and I'm going to get pressure nine times out of ten. I like to put my user on a blitz and then always want to guess pass. Guessing pass is probably the most important thing because if it's a play action, the outside linebackers, are they're going to come in free most of the time. So if you guess pass, they won't uh, bite on the play action. They won't tackle the running back my mistake and let the quarterback get away stuff like that but then i also want to either make sure i mean if i'm this is not the full setup there's two different setups i mean you could send this setup which will get you really good pressure there's also an all-out blitz setup which i'll show you guys here in a second and number one that linebacker in the middle next to me is going to drop right into the uh the bunch i have the opportunity to choose either the running back depending on whether he goes on a route 
or dropping straight back in the middle, which, you know, something I'll have to make post-snap once I see what the play is going on. Uh, but this is pretty much going to be the play. I like the soft squats, too. I think they do a pretty good job. Here you can see uh, the running back's there, but the soft squats takes it away. To me, the soft squats do a pretty good job of covering short or deep. But we'll go ahead and we'll do that again. Like I said, show blitz, baseline, show blitz. That will bring all your uh, linebackers down. And then, like I said, you have really two options here. You could either just blitz your own guy, uh, try to stay home for about a half a second, you know, try to pull this uh, guard, and then drop back into, like I said, either the running back or the uh, – we do get a run play here. I'm glad we got a run play because, like I said, this is not a good inside run play defense, and that's exactly what that was. So that's why, like I said, you're going to have to be Johnny on the spot between that, the pinch dog three, and the cover four quarters. But the setup for all three of these plays are going to be the exact same. So let's go and let's do that again, although there I didn't even get to do that because they just called the play. But like I said, cover two is not a very good inside run defense just based on the fact that the safeties drop back. So you really can get pressure from this setup, but you also have the option to just flat out just blitz all. If you do that... You also have, um, you know, this will give you a really good opportunity when it comes to, um, you know, basically you're going to get much more pressure. So this is still a scenario where I either want to, I typically want to use the guy over the uh, running back. Uh, but that, I mean, that's just for pressure package reasons. But ultimately, you know, it's really your choice whether you want to use him or use the guy over here next to the bunch. I find that the pressure gets in better if you use the guy over the running back. So like I said, this is going to be on me to get back. We already saw how, you know, that soft squat takes care of the running back. So we're going to bring our guys in. Blitz all. I mean, that's really the most you have to do. Everything else is pretty good. Um, and then, you know, ultimately, I'm in a position where, like I said, I got to drop back on that slot receiver. Um, you know, close to the line, it looks like a tight end. I'm not even really sure, you know, but if, as long as I, you know, stay home for like a second, you can see both guys coming off the edge. So very consistent blitz. Let's go to the replay to watch what happened here. Like I said, you might have a short throw to this guy. You really can choose pre-snap whether you want to be, uh, you know, which inside linebacker you want to be. Um, as it's not really letting me uh, control where I'm going. But you got two inside linebacker choices. I mean, I chose this one because I can basically take away the tight end over the middle or the running back. And then you can see it really doesn't matter. I mean, he has six guys blocking, and I think we're sending six. And you can see even the running back missed the guy right in front of him. So a lot of times that will happen. The running back is blocking, but he'll just whiff. And I'm not really sure what that's based off of. But like I said, it's a six on six, and we got two guys coming in free. But you could also do this out of the pinch dog three. Now, this particular defensive package, as I'm messing everything up here, let's go ahead and let's show blitz, base the line, show blitz, get our guys in the place where they need to be. And then, like I said, you can show this look and just leave it like this, have your opponent throwing into it. Or you could uh, run it like this. Like This is a perfect you know, formation for this because it's not like this cover three safety is going to get beat deep by a tight end. Um, I could just bring this guy over to basically take that away. Um, and I could leave these guys all in the all-out blitz, too. I mean, I could, I, if I have time, I could try to repurpose uh, Roe. But ultimately, he's, you know, that's something where I, I, I would say it makes more sense just to hard flat him uh, because, you know, the running back is more of an issue. So we could just basically run it just like that. I got to get back onto these um, onto these guys right here. And you can see we just get that Ole uh, defensive outside linebacker just rushing right around the, court, uh, the edge once again. Let's go. Let's watch that. Like I said, I think it's best to probably use the guy in front of the running back. But since I pretty much have to get back pretty quickly into this area to take away any short throws, you can see nothing's really nothing's immediately open. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this is something where it's the exact same effect, same exact uh, blitz. You can see this guy just comes in free, and this time, you know, nothing was open enough. Although you can see right there, the hard flat kind of screwed me. If I would have had left that in a regular curl flat, he would have undercut that. Um, that tight end a lot better so that's something that's the game you're going to be playing and then last but not least when it comes to cover for quarters exact same setup although i didn't i think i missed one of them there there we go so now we have the exact same setup we're going to bring this guy down into the box um and then this is something where if you're expecting uh you know a run and number one you don't have to do the exact you don't have to blitz everybody but you don't want to guess pass if you're expecting a run if you're using this a run defense these safeties here will drop straight back if you guys pass. But if you don't guess pass, they'll basically just walk straight forward down into the box uh, and try to take away any run lanes. You can see right here, the safety just walks straight forward. So this is going to be one of your best uh, run defenses. Let's go, let's go to the replay here just to show you what I'm talking about. Like I said, these guys here, 
they react to the run first. So as you can see, the second the play starts, they just walk right down, look for contact, or look to to assess, you know, uh, their 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 run fits, which is something that won't happen if you guess pass. So that's why you know knowing what your opponent is doing or guessing what your opponent is doing is so important because if you see a formation like this, obviously they're going to be you know shooting to that uh, to that running back. So you obviously just want to switch over to your cover too. It's the, it'll look the exact same. You just set your hard flat, and you'll basically take that away. Obviously, I'm getting stuck up on the line a little bit, but you can see, I mean, pretty much everything was covered there. But now, I'm going to show you guys a defense today. Today, I'm going to show you guys some new blitzes, some new defensive plays out of the Big Nickel Over G. This is one of my favorite formations going back a couple of years. I mean, since they implemented Big Nickel Over G, it's been one of the best formations in the game. One of the best things about it is you can use pretty much safeties across the board. I mean, I can replace all these linebackers with safeties. So if you play Mutt and you got a lot of safeties, I mean, you can run all these linebacker spots as safety. You can run all these safety spots as cornerbacks if you want to. Uh, you can run linebackers as your defensive ends I mean it's really flexible when it comes to getting you know whatever your fastest package is or whatever your best pass coverage package is you can get it on the field with this particular defense so that's one of my favorite things about it I already put out a couple of blitzes and a couple of plays out of this particular defense so I will have links in the description below for you guys to check that out one of them was the cover three sky now this is still one of my favorite defenses, especially when it comes to a base defense but the defenses I'm going to show you today are very similar except they remove a couple of the steps when it comes to the setup which makes it a lot better a lot quicker uh, and in my opinion one of the better ways to run this particular formation now as far as the plays go I'm gonna put all three of them in my audibles there's really three different plays that you can run this particular uh, scheme that I'm gonna show you guys out of and it really depends on what your favorite defense is you have three options here they're all the weak safety blitz whether it's the one two or three these are the three plays that I'm gonna show today although realistically the setups the exact same in all three and they're all gonna look pretty similar with the exception of the weak safety blitz too which will look like a cover two safety shell but ultimately it's going to have a very similar setup so you can really mirror all three of these setups if you want to and basically run these three plays all game now in my opinion the best play without a doubt is the weak safety blitz three this is going to be the one that i use the most so we'll go and pick the cover three on the offensive side we're just going to go with random gun now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at aoeh.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up and support the channel at the same time all you have to do is check them out link in the description below is your discount code money to get three percent off it's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market so the thing that i like about about this defense and you just saw it that's the weak safety blitzer is coming down to the box all by himself so let's go ahead and let's put our pre-snap art up uh, the reason that I like that is because it really eliminates the step on a previous play that I showed you guys the cover three sky you really had to do all that stuff yourself you really had to bring these guys into position uh, and things like that which you know it's just eliminates the step it makes it quicker it makes it harder for your opponent to basically just come out and, and snap the ball on you there's really only two or three adjustments you have to make the number one adjustment would be to basically click onto this uh, this blitzing safety I'll show you what happens if you don't uh, the second I start making adjustments EA put some stupid thing in here where a lot of times he'll walk back or he'll do something you know he'll go back and then he'll come back down which can mess up the whole play but if you click on him and move him he, he'll stay put so click on him move him and then that's pretty much all you have to do then the only real adjustments you have to make is pinch the defensive line and then slant them outside which is basically D pad to the left and down and D pad to the left and up on the right stick that's all you got to do the last step is essentially just bring your user down over the middle and put them on a blitz. That's all you got to do. Uh, and this is going to be a really good blitz. It's going to be a really good run stopping defense. Like I said, you can basically set up the same way if you have time as the previous play. Don't make it a really good run defense because you can see there's no inside run lanes. There's no outside run lanes because we have outside containment. And then other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can put yourself on hard flats if you like because this pressure will come pretty quick. Uh, that's probably one of the best adjustments that you can make. Uh, but this is pretty much it. And then I'm just going to stay home for half a second and drop back. You always want this blitz coming off the opposite side of the running back because a lot of times the running back won't be able to rotate over if even if he is pass blocking so let's go and let's run this play a couple times like i said right there he was on the pattern you can see our guy just comes in and blows the quarterback up on what i think was a five on five or maybe even a five on six let's go to the replay i did not see how many people were blocking like i said i picked random gun here so basically he did look like he was in a check and release he stayed on for a second and then he goes out of the pattern so ultimately i pull the center and then you can see we have a five on five and this guy's just coming in hot off the edge free so obviously this guy here you're going to want to make sure you have your fastest guy i didn't make that adjustment i just have whoever's there to 
typically. I know Holland's a good player. I don't know if he's really good in this game or not. I have no idea. But you can see, he just comes off the edge untouched. Takes a really good angle because, like I said, I did move him down into the box a little bit pre-snap. You want to have him a little bit closer to the line. You can see he just comes straight up for the quarterback. I mean, that's going to be something you're going to get a lot of pressure on. This is a very good pressure package. You can run this out of multiple different coverages. And like I said, you could run this scheme pretty much all game. You could run uh, any one of these coverages. I'll run the cover two probably the second most because I do like cover two. Although I did pick the wrong play. So let's go ahead and let's... I thought I hit Y. But here we go. We got our cover two look here. So like I said, when you make this adjustment though, you can see it kind of messes up uh, when it comes to these guys. Um, you know, basically it'll change up everything they're doing the more adjustments you make. You see the safeties are shifting and all kind of stuff. That's one of the things I don't like about the cover two and about the cover one is it can really um, have those effects on the coverage. But ultimately, if you get that adjustment in quick enough, you can still have a lot of success. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. This will be even easier because there's no running back in the backfield. We got an empty gun look here. So we're going to have a probably even quicker blitz. And you can see he's just right around that edge. Got you see getting some really good coverage because like I said, if you mix up your coverages, obviously you can confuse your opponent and then you can make a lot of really good plays like this. Your opponent might be expecting that cover three. You hit him with a cover two. You hit him with a cover one and boom, you're having a lot of success. Now I know I said I don't really like cover one, but you got to admit cover three, if you can see right here, cover three pre-snap, going to make my little bit of an adjustment here. Uh, cover three and cover one look the most alike. So this is your best opportunity to fool your opponent, make them think you're running a different coverage entirely. And then you can do something like this. We basically just come down over the uh, the center with the guy covering the running back. This is a really good way to mix in a cover one man. Like I said, I'm not really a fan, but cover three and cover one man look the most similar pre-snap. The cover two is a little bit of a giveaway based off the fact that you go from a single high safety to two, to two high safeties. But this here, like I said, you can confuse your opponent. They can, they can look at this and thank you in that cover through shell and then boom you're coming off the edge uh with a really good blitz uh just as long as you know like right there the running back goes down to pattern i follow him so you have the opportunity to run those together really well so without a doubt cover three and cover one work together the best but you can do uh the cover two blitz uh, here we also have an issue where this running back is on, the, is on the wrong side. So in this scenario like this, I'm better off just basically blitzing this guy here and then basically just switching this guy over to a, uh, a mid-read or, or a middle third or something like that. I mean, I have a cover two anyway. This is really going to be how I want to adjust this defense because ultimately um, I, don't, I don't think that this blitz is nearly as effective and you can't flip the play. Once this play is set up the way that it is, you can't flip the play. So put this guy in something else. It doesn't really matter. You want to man him to the running back or something, man him to the tight end, whatever. But put him in something else. Have your blitz always coming off the opposite side. If you're, if you're using it as a blitz. I mean, a lot of times you can use this as a run defense, and it's not really going to be important to do that. But if you're using this as a blitz, it always has to be the blitz coming off the opposite side of the running back for that to come home. Uh, and it's you know it's going to be the most important part. So we can switch, we can switch that up. We can't really flip the play. And then you can see, boom, we're getting a sack off the other side even with the guy coming off the wrong side. We'll pick that play again. We'll go with some random run plays because you can stop the run with this. So we're going to go concept run. Now I showed you guys this play in a previous um, in the previous defense where you can basically shoot gaps right over the center. We're going to make our exact same adjustments. Like I said, you got to move this guy first so he doesn't uh, he doesn't go anywhere. But pinch your defense or pinch your defensive line, slant outside. Uh, and now you're going to see, I mean, I could basically just shoot the gap right over the center here. Uh, this guy here, I, I want to move him down a little bit. And if I had my choice, I, I'd probably rather play hard flats as far as that goes. But ultimately, I can shoot the gap right over that center. Even on a play like this, which is basically a goal line. Nope. You can see right here, we can just basically just shoot right in and just make a play. The only real difference when it comes to uh, running this play as a run defense, if you're expecting run, uh, is you're pretty much going to want to stay back. Let me just do my setup real quick, which like I said, it's a real quick setup. But in the previous play, I was saying come down here into the box because you're trying to pull a blocker. Here you're trying to basically get forgotten. So I'm going to go out and I'm gonna set up my 4-4 four, four, and I'm going to basically stand back far enough so that you know they, I don't get blocked right away. I'm going to be the last one blocked. That's how I'm going to shoot my gaps, as you can see right there, as we, we, we you know, didn't make the tackle, but we still basically kept him from getting it. Anywhere. I'm going to use it out of a very specific package. I'm going to be using it out of the Big Nickel Over G, uh, which is another series of plays out of my Dolphins uh, ebook slash Giants ebook. This is the exact same defense, essentially. Uh, if you guys want to see more defensive plays, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But the play today that I'm going to be going over, there's really two. It's two different plays, but like I said, it's the exact same concept. You can use this uh, whether you like to run cover two, which I think to me, cover two is probably the better defense right now, or cover three, which it also has the exact same thing with the SS Blitz 3. So let's just go ahead and let's put these on our audibles like we always do. I pretty much always leave cover two man, but I always replace right here. I got a cover three. I'm going to replace these two
two cover threes which much better versions uh cover three versions that will get a little bit of pressure so the ss blitz three and then we're gonna move down we're gonna find the ss blitz two as well and we can pretty much just go back and forth with these plays the entire game i might show a third play here although this ss blitz two is all the way to the bottom i might show a third play if i had a third play it would definitely be the cover four quarters this is the best run defense in the formation so we might go over that as well but this will be my four play setup this is probably my best pass defense probably my best run defense and then these are my best base defenses because they also get pressure and they do a pretty good job stopping the run as well on the offensive side uh we could go with any number of things but i'm going to go against the bunch because ultimately this is going to be one of the best defenses against people that like to run a lot of bunch coverages and bunch coverages is pretty much meta so whether they're running gun bunch gun bunch te whatever any bunch formation or any type formation rather which is pretty much the best formations this is going to be best against now as always this video is brought to my coin sponsor at aoeah.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up i know the new promo just dropped the new uh halloween promo just came out most feared if you want to get your mutt team up and you want to support the channel at the same time check them out link in the description below and use discount code money to get three percent off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market so like i said i'm rocking the cover two here because i personally think cover two is one of the better defenses right now uh, and i'm not the only person i've heard say that so cover two is one of the best ones i find that the cover three version might be slightly better as far as coverage because this does have the seam flats if you guys don't know curl flats don't cover as good as seam flats so both of these plays are very are really good but it's the same setup it doesn't even matter which defense you use now me personally i'm not a huge fan of the soft squats if i were to make a coverage adjustment i would go over the top with the cloud flats personally i think the cloud flats are really good but that's neither here nor there so the setup for the blitz because that's probably the most important part number one you always want to make sure this blitzer number one you got to put your fastest guy in there i didn't do that uh but rose fine he's a decent uh blitzing option he's a fast safety he's got to be like a 90 speed guy if you have like a super fast guy like a 97 speed cornerback of some kind or something like that that's probably the best person to put in here but i'm just going to run it as is because this guy's also going to be very important when it comes to run defense and safeties are going to be very good when it comes to that so got my blitzing safety i don't want him to be so close if he's in too close he'll get picked up by the right tackle sometimes i want to move him out a little bit like i said this is a perfect type of coverage to hide that blitzer in because he looks like he's just right here in his, his zone you're not going to typically expect the blitz coming off uh like you might in some other formations where the receivers are out wide he's right in the bunch it looks like he's in there about to do his job looks like he's about to drop into coverage so that's pretty much the the most important thing maybe move him out just a little bit although where he's out is typically fine uh the, the setup could be easier all i'm going to do is pinch my defensive line which is d-pad left and down basically that brings them all in and then after that i have a couple options i can either slant them left which i find i have a lot of success with or slant them outside they both have success then i want to take the guy here that's basically going to be away from the action because that vert hook his job is going to be jumping these lanes pretty quickly so i'm going to take the guy that's over the running back because the running back will be my responsibility if he goes out into a flat typically um, it's also going to be my responsibility to cover middle but that's pretty much the progression i'm pretty much going to um you know come down in this gap the second the play starts i'm going to try to just just stay here for you know half a second and then drop back into coverage if the running back goes out on a route, I gotta drop back it towards his area, basically cover towards that area. That's pretty much it. And then the last thing would be the guess, the guess pass. That's the most important thing because when it comes to blitzes, guessing pass will always get you more pressure. So ultimately, this is the setup here. Like I said, I'm just gonna come down this gap, just gonna guess pass, hover here for a second, wait for that cornerback uh, or that guard to react to me, and then the cornerback will shoot in free. There, I didn't quite get the reaction that I wanted, but you can see we eventually get a coverage sack because we do have good coverage. So I didn't quite get the blitz that I wanted. Uh, we'll try to set that up again. I also like the baseline press and then baseline one more time. That's something that, like I said, not the most important step, but I like to do that. So we'll go ahead and do that one more time. We're gonna run that. We're gonna run that back. Like I said, maybe I had this this uh, this blitzing safety in a little bit too close. One of the things about this blitzing safety too that I really like, like I said, if it's a run play, it's gonna be an inside zone, which means the running backs gonna be coming right at that blitzing safety. So a lot of times that will stop a lot of run plays. So that's another reason you want to always make sure you run this the way that I'm running it now. So like I said, right here we got that random play, and oh, he got he throws it up into it, it coverage. But I did see the cornerback came in free there. Real quick, we did get that blitzing uh, cornerback in free like I wanted. And you can see he basically just had to, to jump. I mean, that ball just gets out quick. Even though I don't understand why, because he was definitely covered. So Matt Jones just threw it up into a crowd. Uh, but you can see this is the desired effect here. We have this guard basically blocking nobody. One of these guards, that's the, that's the plan every play, is to get one of these linemen blocking nobody. It looks like on the other side, though, we got pressure off of that side, too. So that's something you got to keep in mind. We're basically going to be getting pressure in a lot of different areas. This came because I basically looped around uh, and, you know, the, the right tackle basically just switched off. We got two guys coming in free. To me, the best setup 
without a doubt, is going to be um, pinching the defensive line and slanting to the left, not necessarily slanting uh, out. I, I find this is the best setup here. because And I also find that you can also motion this, this guy over here just to try to pull all the linemen to this side as much as possible. This is probably the ideal setup. So we'll go and we'll do this a couple times. Uh, this is something where you know we should get pressure right off the edge. You can see right here the running back was blocking. He just got he just completely missed and uh, you know stones the quarterback, which is another reason why I was saying you always want to run this blitzer off of this side, off the opposite side of the running back. It, it works to stop the run and it works with the blitz because this guy here is on a straight pass block, but he cannot get around quick enough to stop this blitzing quarterback. That's why you always want to make sure that you're blitzing opposite the running back. It works in every situation. So you can see right here, this guy just comes right off the edge screaming. We got a five on six. Uh, as we only have five blitzers because I'm not a blitzer. I back out pretty quickly. But you can see we have a five with six blockers and the five wins. A really easy blitz to set up too. I mean, it's only really two steps. Um, although there is a third step. If this cornerback isn't down on the box, into the box enough, you got to move him down. You got to mainly move him down. So all you really have to do, pinch your defensive line, slant them away from the blitzing cornerback, and then bring your user down here. Now I'm also going to do um, this hard flat uh, because I think that the computer's going to be thrown underneath quite a bit. Uh, but this is, you know, this is pretty much it. So right here, you got to take away those short throws. You can see he comes in again. That looked like the exact same play. Running back was blocking again. Did not matter. Let's go and let's watch the replay. Um, you can see, number one, I mean, you know, I got to recognize the running backs now on the pattern faster. That's that's one of the most important things because I got to get back to my zone to cover middle. And I got back there good enough that I probably could have lurked. But that's going to all come out in the gameplay. Basically, when you're playing, if your opponent's throwing to the running back a lot, you're going to have to watch the running back. If they're not throwing to the running back a lot, you're basically just going to have to drop back into coverage a little bit quicker than I am. Uh, but like I said, I'm playing the computer. I have no idea what they want to do. But that's something that's going to be easier to, to predict when you're actually playing a live opponent. But ultimately, same result, five or six-man blocking. Uh, we'll go back to our blitzer here. You can see he just comes in off the edge free. Running back doesn't even have a shot. You know what I mean, bottom line, if you have a fast enough guy running this, running back will not get in the way of any of these blitzes. So we'll go ahead and we'll switch it up to the SS Blitz 3, because there are a few variational adjustments that you can make here. Number one, I prefer to keep the three rec. I think the three rec is good. Um, like I said, the seam flats are better. The seam flats are better than the curl flats. That's one of the things I like about this particular defense. At least it doesn't have curl flats. You can go and have, you can have curl flats if you uh, play over the top, but that's not what I want to do. I want the seam flats. The seam flats follow much better. I did a video about this a long time ago. Seam flats are the way to go. Now, when it comes to a, uh, a defense, an offense like this, you got to move your safety over because you'll get cover three, one play touchdown bombs all over you in a bunch if you don't move the safety over. So that will add to what you have to do. But other than that, the only real setup difference is you really have your choice what you want to do, if, whether you want to take away one of the seam flats to user, or if you want to uh, use the three rack hook. Now, against a bunch like this, it's going to be best to, to basically, in my opinion, I mostly do this with the seam flat. But you can go with the three rack. The three rack's best because in this bunch scenario, he's going to follow any drags or any crossers better. Um, so I'm going to leave him there, and I'm typically going to use her the seam flat. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only difference. Like I said, I'm having more success coming outside here and slanting away. So I'm going to continue to do that, uh, and then we're just going to basically just run it like this. So we'll go ahead and we'll let, like I said, right here, we got that running back. Got to take that away. We got pressure from the other side, though. You can see multiple guys were coming in on that particular play. So we really didn't get a lot of run plays there, but we're going to finish this video with the best run defense, and that's the cover four quarters. So we're going to pick that. On the offensive side, uh, I guess the only run play we have in this is going to be the halfback base. So we'll go with the halfback base. So the setup's going to be pretty similar. We're just going to pinch that defensive line. Then we're going to baseline, show blitz, baseline. The idea behind that is to get these safeties down into a position where they can basically uh, affect the run. Because if you don't, you don't guess pass. This is your run defense in this formation. You're not going to guess pass here. If you don't guess pass, and I'm not going to shoot the gap, even though I know where the play's going. No. Nope. Uh, you can see, I mean, number one, they did shoot the gap for me because we get a loss. But uh, without a doubt, I mean, this is going to be one of the best run defenses in the uh, in the formation. Probably to me, the best run defense in the formation. So here we go once again. Okay, so I kind of want to keep this guy down on the line, uh, but this is pretty much it. You don't really have to do anything else. Just pinch the defensive line, uh, baseline show blitz baseline, and your safeties just don't get past. And your safety is going to do a very good job of filling the lanes. Uh, so I'm just going to sit back and watch the defense nope. you know, go to work. So you can see nothing there. There's no uh, lanes to run on. The formation itself is the big nickel over G. Now, there's really two different plays you can do this with. The cover three sky and the cover three buzz match, they're essentially very similar. There's a slight difference as far as 
um, what you're, you know, where you're getting your, your curl flats from. And I feel like the matching concept might be a little bit better coverage, but I really leave that up to you guys because to me, um, you can do this exact same setup with both. But the one I see people using the most is probably Cover 3 Sky. The MVPs of this plate are going to be the guys in the purple zone. So make sure you have your best players there. Make sure you sub your fastest safeties and cornerbacks at those spots if you can do that. You can see I got Byron Jones here at the strong safety spot and Eric Rowe uh, as the box safety. That's going to be perfect. So we're going to pick that. Then we'll pick uh, Cover 3 Sky on the defensive side. On the offensive side, we're just going to go random uh, gun bunch. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOEH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support the channel at the same time, all I have to do is check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEY to get 3% off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. Now, to start off, this defense here, it's a super easy setup. Number one, you got your middle high safety here. I don't like defenses where uh, the safety is off to the side um, and you basically have something that looks like this and then and a lot of times it can get you in trouble. I like the fact you have a single high safety, especially with these bunch looks. Uh, I find that that really helps to have that safety in the middle of the field. But as far as the base setup goes, all you really have to do is hit, I'm going to go and get off this guy, but all you have to do is hit the, uh, the, the R1 button or the right bumper and then down the left stick to pinch the defense. Now this guy here, I already moved him so he's not going to move down by himself. But ultimately, this is going to be your look. You can see as far as run defense goes or pass defense goes, number one, everybody's in the box. You got nine man in the box. You have your, your second level backers. A lot of times if you have a six man front like we have here, you don't have linebackers behind it. But we have linebackers right behind it to fill those lanes. And then you can see, like I said, the six man front is really where it's at. These six defenders here, they're going to, no matter what, run, no matter what formation you're looking at on offense, they're going to have the outside leverage. They're going to have the widest point. So you can see right here, there's no real outside run opportunities based on the fact that these guys are going to be wider than the widest blockers, which is basically going to give you outside run fits every single time. And then the pinch also basically takes away any run uh, lanes inside. So any inside zones are going to get shut down by these four defenders. And if there's any outside runs, uh, they're basically going to get taken care of by these outside guys. So it's a really good setup when it comes to that. Uh, you have the option if you really think it's going to be a run play too. You could also go uh, hard flats. Set your hard flats to five or zero uh, and set your, um, your curl flats. Uh, which I'm going to have to switch back for the curl flats, but set your curl flats typically to me about 25, 30 for people that ask. But this is pretty much going to be the setup. And then, like I said, if I expect a low, a low throw uh, or an outside run, I get hard flat. That's pretty much going to be your coverage setup as well. Now you have other options here uh, when it comes to blitzing. But let's go and let's run this real quick. Hopefully, we'll get a run play. Nope. As you can see, we get uh, some pressure. We didn't really have to do anything there, uh, but pretty much everything was locked up. I did go hard flats on that play, but you can see, I mean, there's not a lot open. I could probably go to the replay real quick just to show you guys that uh, even with the hard flat setup, that everything was pretty much locked up. There's nothing really open here. You can see everything has pretty much coverage. Now there's a really easy blitz setup out of this as well. Um, all you really have to do is you can blitz either one of these guys off the side here, or you can blitz both, which is something that a lot of people do. You can send the house uh, and blitz both of these guys. Um, and you could also, I mean, you don't really need, like I, if I really want to, we got three uh, receivers on the right side here. I could basically make this guy, um, you know, the curl flat and basically operate just like this and just send some extra pressure. I think if it works best if you slant your defensive line out, uh, but ultimately you really have your choice. You could blitz one of these outside guys, or you can blitz both. You just have to start with this guy down here in the box. And you're going to want to do this in pretty much every single play is bring this guy down to the box. Now, ultimately you also want to make sure that you uh, guess pass. That will help in a lot of different ways but this is just a way to send a lot of pressure I don't know what we're gonna be seeing here it might be a run play which it is nope uh, as you can see once again there's no run lanes inside that's the first run play that we've had like I said this guy here I want him all the way down at the line I don't want him back like that so if I have to use or do that I can do that and you know there's a couple adjustments you can get here for this pressure to get you know to be to be kicked up a notch I said I'll just basically stop here and then you can see that comes right around the running back and we can get some easy sacks uh, as long as you you know play patty cake with the center of the guard which is probably the most important part here. So, like I said, that was a play action. Typically, with these play actions, a lot of times these faster guys can get around the running back anyway. As you can see right here, they come off the edge on both sides. Although this guy here gets in first, uh, you can see the guy on the other side would have got in if he didn't, if he wasn't humping his teammate's leg. What the hell is going on? I don't know what's going on over here. As you can see, he doesn't have a blocker in front of him. He just takes a bad angle. So that's why, like I said, it's really important pre-snap to move these guys out and really down to the line. I think that's why the other guy had more success. You can see he doesn't really start off at the line. He's back about a yard or so, and he doesn't have as good of an angle, where this guy here has a much better angle. He's much more uh, linear. I don't know if I could get them both in the same frame, but you can see he's down at the line of scrimmage. He takes a much better angle because of that. He just goes right around the tackle. So 
that's really, I'm glad that that mistake happened because you have to make sure that you put those guys in the right spot. So we'll go and do that one more time. We don't have to blitz both either. Like I said, you can just blitz one. You can see how this one came off the backside really well. And then I can leave all my pass coverage over there. Go ahead and we'll go with a hard flat. Like I said, one of my biggest things though, make sure this, this safety is where he belongs. And then come right over this center here. And we're just going to basically pull this guy whenever we get the, uh, the ball to snap. There we go. Like I said, hold that center. It looks like the defensive tackle, the defensive end came off. Uh, but once again, I mean, you, I sacrificed that flat. He recognized that. So you got to be, you know, you got to be aware of that. Like there, I probably should have been all over that running back. That's on me. Wasn't really paying attention. I'm kind of just watching for the blitz to get home. Um, as I might have, of course, I accidentally put that middle third on somebody who's not supposed to be on. So here we go. One more time. Like I said, I like the hard flat because the pressure typically gets in there pretty good. That's something I think a lot of people like to do. And we we'll get another good run D stop, as you can see. I mean, everybody was pretty much on block there. Even I was coming in, um, which wasn't even really planned. So, like I said, I'm just going to bring that guy down. You're going to want to try to bring them both down. I mean, if, if you don't want to look like, you're just, like it's obvious that you're blitzing one. But that's really the play here is you can blitz either one. And your opponent, if they sh you know, sh shift or slide, as you can see, once again, we get another free rusher there on the run play. But like I said, I mean, you could do this off of both sides. So let's go and let's, this time we're going to blitz row. So pretty much the exact same setup. Although I really want to make sure if I'm doing it this way, like I said, you got to put Baker out there. Hopefully it's not too much of a tell that I'm moving all the way out there, but we'll put Baker out there. And like I said, just pull this guy. You see, we get the rusher off the other side. The running back gets picked up. You did see that free rusher came in, though. Like I said, you can get pressure off of both sides. That's what makes this so hard to diagnose. You can see we got four guys being blocked by five guys. And this guy's coming in free right into the quarterback's area to get rid of the ball. And you can see coverage is pretty good, too. Everything's pretty much locked up out there. Like I said, full setup. I'm pretty much just slanting outside, guessing pass, and then hovering over this gap which looks like we got a guy right over the middle and we get the sack off the other side. So you can see, we can get sacks off of either side. It's really what's gonna make this a really good scheme. It's one of the reasons that people like to run it is you can really have your choice. You can't ID anybody, you can't shift in any, in any particular direction because there's just so many different things that can be done here. Now you could also go with like a max, um, you know, a lot of people like the Mabel outside. You can do that with Baker here. I could put him into a hard flat Basically, um, well, I don't know. What, I think I hit the wrong one there. I can put him into a hard flat. We can Mabel outside if we want to do that. So while this can be a very good pressure package, you could also, um, you know, try to uh, set up like this where you're essentially, you know, I'm obviously responsible for middle now by myself, but we can basically Mabel everything and just try to get some really good pass defense just like this. So let's go ahead and let's do that one time. Like I said, there's, you know, everything's pretty much Mabel covered nope. here and you can see he just throws it away. So you can do a number of things here. You can do, um, you know, with this with this setup, I mean, it's a, it's a really easy setup. Like I said, I always wanna make sure I have my safety over, but you could always hard flat this guy and get that same Mabel setup that a lot of people like to run. Like I said, to me, the best way to do that would be, uh, you know, five yard hard flats, 30 yard curl flats. That's typically what I do. Sometimes zero, sometimes 25, but something in that range. And then you could basically set this up like this all game. You're gonna have really good run defense, really good pass defense all game. And you have the ability to uh, to blitz out of either side, which is gonna be a nightmare for your opponent. And that formation is the 3-3-5 odd. Now the play that I seem to be seeing the most is just a regular cover three sky, but I personally don't use that. I started using this formation because I saw people running that against me and having success, but I'm gonna show you guys a lot of different plays in this uh, formation um, that I think that really create a very strong scheme. If you guys wanna see more defensive plays, as always, do me a favor, hit the like button, leave it on the comment section. But for now, let's go and let's get right into the video. Uh, I'm gonna start off with probably my favorite play, a blitz. I know a lot of people out there wanna get some pressure. So I'm gonna go with the Cover 3 Sky Show 4. This is something that works in a lot of different formations, but the way that I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna get instant pressure and I'm gonna get a lot of sacks. Let's go and let's pick that on the defensive side, which, or on the offensive side, I should say rather. We're just gonna go with something in a shotgun. Um, I'd like to go random gun, but I'll probably get a lot of pass plays. So let's just go with something that a lot of people use. This something, this something here. Let's go with the level sale, which obviously is one of the uh, more popular 
formations and plays. We'll, we'll mix it up. We'll just go random uh, trips TE flex. So now as far as his defense goes, like I said, it's cover three. You know, I, I've, I've run a lot of people running cover three. So that was one of the reasons that I decided to uh, kind of mess around with this. But I'd much rather try to create pressure than just run a cover three basic. So all I'm going to do here to try to get some pressure is I'm just going to shift my defensive line to the one side. Then I'm going to slant them to the right as well. And then I'm just going to basically, I mean, this guy here, he's out kind of far. I want to cheat him in a little bit. But I basically want to take one of these players. Typically, I take the, the, the one closest to this side, but I want to leave that hook over because there's so much action going on over there. And I'm just going to basically put him on a blitz and bring him in this gap. I'm also going to make sure that I guess pass because I just think that that helps. I don't you know, make some get after the quarterback. They won't bite on play actions and stuff like that. And this is pretty much it. I'm going to try to uh, basically shoot this gap and basically hold as much lineman to the side as possible. As you can see right there, it almost looks like a screenplay. And the pressure came right off the edge and forced an incompletion on the very first play. So let's go, let's go to the replay to see what happened because it happened so fast I didn't even really uh, see. But you can see when I do this, the entire offensive line jumps to the side. It's, it's, I, did, I got sucked in, which wasn't really the plan. I had to disengage. But like I said, the whole point is to get this cornerback a free run. Now, I also want to make sure I have my fastest guy there. For whatever reason, it typically is, but it's not right now. Like online, when I play in Mutt, I typically have Jalen Ramsey, who's my best cornerback, running that. But for whatever reason, he's not. So I'll probably switch that out for a speed guy because he seemed to come in a little bit slow, a little bit faster. He probably would have had that sack. But you can see at the end of the day, it's a four-man, five protection blitz if I get disengaged, and then we have a guy coming in free. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Like I said, shift my line to the right, slide them to the right as far as their attack lanes. I typically want this cornerback, I want to bring him in a little bit. I want to cheat him in because he's kind of far out. Um, if I do decide to bring this guy down, which is typically the guy that I like to do, um, I got to make sure I bring this safety over. That's probably the biggest thing is I, I probably want him in the center of the field because if I do, if I decide to bring this guy down, it's going to create problems uh, for the deep safety because he's out of position. But this is typically the guy that I want to use. So let's go and let's do that. Like I said, I have to jump back pretty quickly to get into the throwing lanes or I could just decide to use the Woo! other guy. You can see right there, the pressure comes off the other side this time. So you can see there's a lot of opportunities uh, for pressure as we'll go to the instant replay. Like I said, I typically want this guy over here to get the pressure, but obviously I didn't pull the line that time. So you can see here, this guy on the other side comes in free uh, and he's getting to the rush. Now, once again, I had, to, I had to, I have to engage and get off a little bit quicker, but you can see how easy it is to get pressure on both sides of the field when it comes to this blitz. So we'll go and do that again. I'm going to continue to go with Jerome Baker because I think he's probably the better of the two. Like I said, I just want to sneak this guy in a little bit. I don't want to bring him over too much to the point where he's going to get picked up, but this is pretty much the look. So like I said, I will start over here. I never tried starting over here. Let's do that on this play. Let's see what happens if I start all the way over here. If I can bring all these guys around, Woo! you see, boom, we get that guy off the edge once again. So maybe I wasn't going over far enough because this is, you know, I, I run the splits. The way that I run the splits, I'll go back to the replay. The way that I run it, I typically start over the center, but it looked like it worked out even better uh, if I stayed over there. I didn't have to engage. You see that time look how the guard just basically uh, follows me it's 71 here he follows me because he's expecting something this is ideal this is perfect because if the guard here is blocking nobody and I never got picked up and I never got suctioned in or engaged this is probably an even better way to run it so we'll go and we'll do that again I didn't really move that cornerback over maybe I should just leave him out there like I said, this is a this is a blitz I was I've been running I've been having success with it but it's even you know the game is even new to me it just came out so I don't even have all the uh, the, the the wrinkles figured out now doing all this is not Woo! going to be great you can see right there the guard gets lost in no man's land again we get an easy sack doing all this is not going to be great for against the run that's the only real downside to this setup because basically if you're in a shotgun like this there's only really one run play you can run you can run an inside zone which you know obviously there's a huge gap in front of the guard uh, and then obviously you could also take it outside but th this is you know basically this is a, a straight up blitz that you're gonna get best results but you can see here once again 71 is blocking nobody mostly because I'm pretending to be a blitzer then when I go away you know there's he's just he's just nowhere he's not fast enough to be able to turn around and engage with this cornerback who's just flying in unblocked 
So this is, like I said, this the Cover 3 Sky Show 4 is probably my favorite defense. It's similar to the 335 Cover 3 Sky that I was seeing a lot online because you're just, it's just a better pressure package version of it. So to me, it's like I said, it's an upgrade. So that would be my first play that I put uh, in my adjustments. I typically would take this one out. Uh, and then I would put, uh, where are we at here? I would put, uh, where, where I can't even find the play now. There we go. I'd put that in my adjustments. I like the cover two, man. I like to keep that in there. My third play, cover two is okay. But I would say my, my next favorite play would be the LB cross three show two. Now this trick here is an old trick, but it's a good one. It's something I've put out multiple times over multiple years. It works really well in this scheme. All I really want to do is zone all linebackers. That's basically going to give me a ton of mid tier coverage, uh, which is going to work well with this scheme because of the pressure package that it comes with. So if I set it up, I try to make it look like I'm doing the exact same blitz. I, press, I, I you know, push this guy over here. I bring this cornerback in and make it look like he's going to come in and off the edge i can bring this guy down you know just the same way just to make it look like all these things are setting up for the exact same blitz and then at the end of the day it's not going to be a blitz at all so let's just go and let's let the computer run the computer is probably not going to make the same mistakes that the the a user would as you can see he's just holding the ball which is essentially you know a good sign that nothing's open and then taking off with the quarterback which is once again a good sign that nothing's really open um this is just a really good defense to run you have a lot of different options too you can do things like you know because you have three guys in the middle here you can put these guys in the hard flats you can put uh you know any any number of of these positions if you really think that you know he's, he's going to throw to the flats more as i messed that up we can go double mabel on both sides we can just basically use this three rack on our own but like i said there's a lot of different things you can do just make sure you don't you know take the safety over but there's a lot of different things you can do to create a really good um you know heavy heavy zone drop everybody back type of defense and basically just take away everything so like i said we're going to do this one more time it really seems like cam and the patriots are running the exact same play over and over and you can see once again nothing's open the computer isn't even willing to throw the ball because everything's covered so then last but not least for this video i'm going to show you guys what's probably the best run defense and that's the cover for drop we'll go ahead and we'll pick that on the offensive side we'll actually kick it up a notch we'll just go with straight random i form so I don't know where the ball is going to go. All I'm going to do if I want to bring these guys down into uh, put them in a position to make plays against the run, I'm going to hit Y triangle, then I'm going to hit uh, base align, which is left stick to the right. Then I'm going to hit Y triangle, left stick to the left, which is show blitz. Then I'm going to do it one more time to base align again so these cornerbacks don't get cooked. So basically everybody's playing down, they're playing tight. Um, I could do things with my linebackers and my defensive line if I want to. Sometimes I'll pinch him if, I'm, if, it's, if it's like a, a short situation as he snagged, he, snagged, he hiked the ball, I wasn't ready, but you can see he still didn't get much as it was just a screenplay. Uh, or a swing pass, but ultimately this is something where you can set this up really quick Like I said, I don't want those cornerbacks down too far because if they're down too far a simple You know streak can cook them so they're in a good position and these safeties here They react really re really well to the run if you'll, you'll see hopefully they'll, they'll run a couple of uh, run plays And we'll be able to see them in action But ultimately this is pretty much the base setup and then like I said if you want to you could really mess with these uh, Adjustments you could I would say bring this guy down would make a lot of sense just bring him to the line give yourself as much uh, you know coverage as possible this would probably be the look this would be something that I would do to try to uh, you know if somebody's running the ball against this formation a lot as we haven't gotten any run plays yet and Cam Newton once again has to throw the ball away because it's a good defense cover four is going to give you a lot of zone options so let's go and let's do that again we like said here you know this is going to be the look right here I mean I have I have outside containment which is these guys I can hard flat them if I think it's going to be a run you can see both sides I have a guy who can hold down that edge and these safeties if they ever run the ball you will see these safeties play the run really well in cover four although we're not getting any run plays at all cam news not throwing the ball at all yeah look at this i mean he's oh really we're gonna get a fumble six we're gonna get a fumble sell because cam Newton gave up on the play so like i said there's just coverage wise is great we might have to force pick a run play because i'm trying to show run defense and i'm not getting any run plays so we weren't getting a lot of run plays there so i'm gonna have to back out and pick one myself Pick that cover for drop one more time. We're gonna go with uh, we'll go with the you know just like the most common run play in the world, which is the inside zone. So we're gonna pick that. Like I said, setting this up. We're gonna go baseline show blitz baseline. You have a lot of smaller guys anyway. I typically I'm gonna bring these guys in. You got a lot of smaller guys on the field. 
So you really have to make sure that you know you match personnel. I don't want to be overpowered by an I form anyway. So let's go and let's pinch that defensive line, spread those linebackers, and this is pretty much going to be the look. Now, when it, I'm not going to cheat to the you know for, since I know it's an inside zone, I can easily slide protection or slide my defense over, which obviously will, will help to shut that down. But I will leave it as is just to kind of you know be fair. I don't want to I don't want to I didn't want to do it this way because I don't want to tip my hand that I know where the play is going. But this is pretty much going to be the run defense. I'm going to try to stay out of it. I'm going to try to stay in my lane. And now you can see the safeties typically shoot down and fill those gaps. So let's go to the replay because I was waiting for a long time just to show what these safeties do. In cover four, these typically the safeties will play the run first. And you'll see they just basically walk right down to the box. That's what makes this a really good run defense is because they will play down Cover three safeties won't do that. Cover two safeties won't do that. Cover four safeties will play down. They will fill. And you can see right here, this guy here just basically, he makes the play, stacks it. This guy here probably could have tackled him for a two-yard gain, but he gets past him a little bit and still a really good run defense. If you're giving up three yards of carry, which is exactly what that gave up, you're going to have a very good run defense and people are going to give up on it. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that again. I mean, you could always, you know, since, it's, since we know it's an inside zone, we could always uh, just do a shift too, which is something that it's just a run-stopping defensive tip. I mean, that's probably something that anytime I come out in a uh, and I see a shotgun I typically shift the line because inside zone is really the only option so you can do that and give yourself a little bit of an advantage too and then you can see like I said you're really giving up minimal gains at best but today I'm going to add to that scheme with the overload three sky press on the offensive side I would like to go random uh, I guess I will I guess I'll go random but I want to pick something uh, you know, we'll go ahead, we'll go with the bunch offset. This is basically meta, so we'll go with that. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsor, AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support this channel at the same time, all you have to do is use that link in the description, top line, use discount code money to get 3% off the, what's already the cheapest coins on the market. Now, the setup for this is super easy. All I'm going to do is pinch the entire defense. That's the RB, R1, then down on the left stick. That's the first step. The next step is Y triangle, then I'm going to base align, show blitz, base align. Now, the purpose of that, I messed it up because this safety is supposed to come down too and I, I might have actually did it one too many times because that other cornerback is supposed to drop back a little bit there was going to be the look where the safeties and the cornerbacks are both at depths where they shouldn't get burned by any streaks or pass plays but also will be effective in shorter routes they're closer to the line so they'll be a little bit more uh, aggressive and they'll you know like I said so this to me is one of the better depths when you baseline show blitz and baseline the last step well the second last step is going to be to guess pass but then the last step is going to be to blitz your user which is this three rack here and bring him right down into uh, this gap. That's all you really have to do. This should do a number of things. Number one, the number one run, run play you're going to see in gun formation is going to be the inside zone. This should stuff that because you can see all the inside zone lanes are going to be stuffed. If you try to take it outside, this cornerback here will take care of that. So that'll do a good job against run defense. And then you're also going to see the type of pressure that this gets. Whether it's a four-man, whether it's a, a blocking running back or not, we're still going to get pressure here. It's just going to come from different areas. So let's go and let's, like I said, I'm going to stay down in this box just for a second back out. You can see on the very first play, Jalen Hurts immediately recognizes that there's an un, uh, an un block blitzer coming in we'll go to the replay here the point of this is to bring all these linemen in as tight as possible it doesn't matter whether the running backs block or not I think on this play he went out in a pattern you're gonna see uh, the pressure is typically gonna come from this guy if that happens you can see right here this this uh, this tackle here he gets in a position where he already knows like what am I doing here am I blocking this this defensive end or am I blocking this cornerback it looks like for a second he's gonna turn to the cornerback if he would have did that, this guy would have got all free. That's why I'm saying this pressure comes from multiple areas. The defensive end in front of him, or as an outside linebacker, I'm not really sure, but he would have got all free. So that's one of the things you're going to see a lot in this particular series of plays. But you can see, we're going to get that free cornerback pretty much every time. Just put your fastest cornerback, I forgot to mention that, put your fastest cornerback at this spot because that's going to make a big difference. I mean, even your biggest hitter, your biggest playmaker, all that stuff's going to be helpful having him at this cornerback spot. So we're going to do that a few more times, but hopefully... Um, you know, we, we'll just uh, get all the looks that we want. We want to get some run looks. We want to get some looks where the um, the running back is blocking. Uh, but, you know, really easy setup. I'll go ahead and I'll do this one time. Hopefully, we'll get that, blo that blocking running back. And then we did. Oh, I don't know what that was, but that looked... I think both guys get in. I don't know if that was a, uh, a screenplay or something. That was weird. So here we get that second look. I was just talking about how sometimes you're going to see um, the cornerback get in. Other times you're going to see this look where this defensive end gets in or this outside linebacker. I'm not really sure once again. But Lane Johnson looks like he tries to pass him off to the running back. And then he goes out on the cornerback, which you can see right here. He does get that cornerback. Or no, he doesn't even get the cornerback. The cornerback runs right past him anyway. So both of these guys come right past. I don't know if that's why the running back, maybe he went to a check and release. He didn't block 
anybody. And you can see we just have a screaming A gap and a really good outside cornerback pressure all in the same play. But I really have to user this gap and then drop back and be the middle of the field right here. I gotta, I gotta basically stay here long enough that this guard pulls and then just walk away and try to take away anything over the middle. As you can see, we get a, a drag, which is why uh, Jalen, I guess, felt more comfortable just throwing it into a crowd. There are some adjustments you can make for better coverage. Number one, it gets a bunch uh, set like this. You probably want to move this deep zone over to the point where he's uh, over top of the bunch coverage. Basically, that'll keep them from getting any one-play touchdowns because there are a lot of one-play touchdowns you can create from bunch coverages. But if you move the safety over, it should be no issue. If you want a hard flat, it just adds to the adjustments, but you'll take away those short throws, which are gonna be important because obviously the pressure's coming in so quick. So you might see more short throws than anything. But we're gonna do that one more time. Now we're just gonna go against random plays in general, the entire format, the entire book. We're just gonna go random gun. I mean, this is a hard defense to run from the gun. As you can see, there's just no, you know, this is, this is, you're running right, at, you're typically running right into the issue. Whether it's the cornerback or the or the all the you know the, the stuffed defensive box, as you can see right there, we try to shoot the cap, but I wasn't paying attention. But it didn't matter because he comes through and cleans up my mess because this play is just good like that. You always want to run it to the opposite side of the running back, though. That's the thing. You always want to make sure that the that the the blitzing cornerback, and I don't even know who that guy is, but you want to make sure he's coming in from the side opposite the running back because that will help with the run plays and it'll help with the pass plays. Even if he's blocking, a lot of times the cornerback will get around anyway. Uh, now this is a unique play here. I can basically just take this guy. I don't have to really do anything. Um, I can just take this guy in here because you can see the, the zone assignments are a little bit different. So this is actually gonna be better for me if I have a fast linebacker, which I'm not really sure I do. But uh, this is pretty much the exact same look. Like I said, just pinch this defense. That's the most important part. If you don't mess with all the coverage adjustments in the back, that's not the end of the world. But pinching the defense is the more important part you can see the cornerback comes right around i didn't do a very good job covering the middle though i did chase the running back and i gave that up cover threes are improved even though i made a video saying that they're not much improved they are improved the cover three defenses are definitely better post patch um they're just you know uh you know like Woo! anything else you can see right there like i said we finally get that look where i get that guy off the other side for some reason you can get sacks it looks like this where you get a play action and if you get a play action a lot of times i'm on the wrong guy uh, a lot of times when you get a play action for whatever reason they're expecting the running back to come right off of that block and get this guy but if you guess pass a lot of times he just comes running straight in and gets an instant sack so i had to back out and choose a look with that play action just to show you guys what happens but we're gonna go we're gonna run it like this one time and then we're gonna end this video. Like I said, if that if that guy makes a mistake to play action, Woo! you get that look every single time. Every single time that quarterback does a play action, you can get a sack right off the edge. It's a really glitchy blitz. We've seen we've shown pressure from three different areas. We've shown it from the cornerback, the linebacker, and now we're gonna show it again from this defensive end. So like I said, I'm not doing anything. They just basically block inside. The cornerback came in free too on that play. So there's definitely a certain offense you do not want to run against this. As you can see on this play, the cornerback comes in free. I mean, everybody came in free. Like we have, it's. <laughs> I got suction in a little bit, but for the most part, this is what? How many blockers we have here? We have a six on five and two guys coming free. So only three guys are getting blocked, including myself. I should have pulled off, but you can see how easy of a blitz this is. So we're gonna switch formations because we weren't really getting the run plays that we wanted. And we're gonna go with a popular inside zone out of the gun trips T offset because we want to get some run plays to show how this stops run plays anyway. So let's go and let's pick that. So this is one of the reasons that you're definitely gonna want your your um, your safeties closer to the line because they're gonna be important when it comes to run defense. The only thing I'm not gonna do here, the setup's the exact same, the only thing I'm not gonna do is guess pass, obviously. So here you can see we have um, not too much lanes in the center. Though. There we got washed a little bit. We could fix that just by simply uh, changing the uh, the lane in which I'm rushing. I don't have to rush that lane for the blitz to get in. It's just the one that I prefer. And then you can see it basically just changes. Uh, I don't get washed out of the play because the previous play, I'm getting washed out of the play because I'm still kind of treating this like, um, like uh, I'm gonna drop back into coverage. Where here, if I start off over here, they'll just they'll just basically let me in to shoot the gap, as you can see right there. Um, I just came in a little bit late, so we'll actually shoot the gap once or twice, just to show you guys that there is a lane in which you can shoot the gap. You just have to basically start right over here. So this is not ideal because you're coming across the formation, but you have the other blitzers coming in. You can see right there. I mean, it's just you have to take it wide. 
So a very good run defense against inside zones. You just have to change it up just a little bit and just bring this guy out over here, which seems counterintuitive uh, considering that you want to be in that lane, but you can see it just basically, you know, there's no real holes to run here. The formation, like I said, I'm using the Dolphins playbook. I like the Dolphins uh, playbook. It's probably my favorite playbook right now. It's got a lot of really good formations like the big nickel over G. Um, it's got the 3-3-5 three, three, wide, the, the double A gap, the 3-3-5 three, five, three, three, five odd, which I already put out of the scheme, or maybe I will be. I'm not sure what, the, what order these videos are coming out, but I already recorded a scheme out of the 3-3-5 three, three, odd. Uh, this is my favorite uh, defensive playbook. This is going to be the ebook that I put out this year. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be touching on a lot of other ones. I might do the Giants as well. Let me know in the comment section what ebook you guys want to see as far as defense goes or what your favorite defense is. But as far as this video goes, uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start off with the nickel 55. Now, one of the best things you can do this year that I'm not even sure if you could do it last year was you could add a safety at the middle linebacker spot. I think you could, but I'm just not 100% sure. So just make sure you put a safety at your user. Um, I don't know if there's still a lot of defenses where you can shift over from the 3 through 5 to 3 through 5 wide like people were doing last year, but that's one of the best things you can do. I would also make sure for some of the plays it's going to matter who this outside linebacker is. So try to have some speed out there. That's probably the most important thing. Jalen Phillips, I'm not sure how fast he is, but I know he's their first round pick. So I'll go ahead and I'll put him there. So let's go ahead and let's pick uh, the first play. There's a couple plays. One of the metas that everybody seems to be running is the Mike Blitz 3. Uh, I personally think that's a pretty good defense. I know you can get pressure with it. I always liked uh, the three Samuel Blitz. This was one that I put out probably Madden 16 or 17. It was one of my most popular videos. It's a lot of really good plays here. I'll definitely have a lot of extra ones on my Patreon and on my Join Now community tab. So check that out. If link in the description below or hit the like button. I'll try to put these out later at a later date. So we're going with Setter Audibles. Like I said, there's so many good plays here. We're going to go with the cover two man. I'm going to show you guys a good way to run that. The Mike Blitz Zero is already there. Uh, the next play, I'm going to put the Sam through Will Blitz in there because I like that play. Uh, and then the last one we're going to put in will be the uh, the Mike Blitz 3. Let's go and let's start off with the meta that everybody seems to be running anyway, and that's the Mike Blitz 3. So when it comes to getting pressure, one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, um, you know, basically send all your all your defensive linemen. You're going to want to blitz Wilkins here. He doesn't really do much dropping into coverage. He's too slow. I typically like to spread my defensive line, and then I like to bring this guy down into one of these gaps. This is going to be my user. I also want to make sure that I, I guess pass because that will just make sure that if it is a play action that these outside linebackers will not react. And then I'm going to basically hover this gap before I release. You can do either gap, but considering the shotgun formation, if it's going to be a run play, it's going to be an inside zone. So I'd rather plug this hole because that's the most likely area where the running back would run. So we'll go and we'll start here. As the play starts off though, we're basically just going to, uh, as you can see right there, we're getting inside zone. So like I said, there's definitely a good reason to be in that gap. So we're going to do it again. Like I said, you can come down this gap. You don't have to spread the defense line I just find that that's uh, one of the better ways to go but you can see it doesn't really matter the pressure comes in anyway and that's pretty much one of the best ways to get uh, pressure like I said I have a nice speedy linebacker out there Jerome Baker got to make sure you have your speed at this at these spots and once again if the running backs not blocking there's not gonna be anything in his way uh, as he goes right to you know I'm, I'm on the running back if you watch the replay like I just I engage very shortly and I back away actually I never got engaged because like I said I typically try to loop to the right so that I can basically not get touched and then I'm all over that running back and by the time I get into that you know set he's already getting planted so it's a super easy blitz to set up if you're worried about that flat I mean you could always just hard flat that's one thing that this game covers pretty well is hard flats and like I said really just you know I'm just basically slanting the defensive line outside crashing them outside blitzing this or bringing this blitzer down into the uh, to the gap once again inside zones are gonna get shut down as you can see right there there's nowhere to go go on let's do this one more time like I said I'd like to get more pass plays I'll go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna hard flat just because I'm sure that uh, white in the flat will, will be you know that will be something that will be there and you can see boom we're just getting very easy sacks so very easy pressure system to get like I said you could also do this out of the Mike Zero Blitz this is something that I used to run every game every play it was so difficult for people to stop uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same setup all I really had to do is bring this guy down here this is a scenario a lot of times I like to uh, to bring this guy down a lot of times I just like to let him blitz to be honest with you like you can you can just let him blitz and then bring this guy down and cover the running back yourself or sometimes like I said because if, if the running back does block him blitzing definitely plays a key role but uh, in a scenario like this a lot of times I'll just basically cheat over to one of these gaps 
where, you know, like I said, right here, we got three receivers. So if there's anything crossing, I'll basically just come down here and then drop into these crossers. And you can see right there, we almost, uh, we almost got a pick. So like I said, you're gonna get a lot of pressure. You're gonna get a lot of success. The man coverage one is something I would say it's just best to, to mix in every once in a while, but it's kind of easy to, to call man coverage out. So this is pretty simple. Like, you know, this is a man coverage. So guessing pass, that's all we have to do on this play. Just bring him down and guess pass. And then boom, shut down the run once again, getting the same pressure. They're basically the exact same play now the next play I'm going to show is the three Sam Will Blitz. It's, you can do essentially the same stuff with this that you can do with the Mike Blitz Zero, but I find there's some additional benefits to the three Sam Will Blitz that make it slightly better for coverage purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Then on defense, off the side, we're going to do the exact same thing, Randomo. Basically, the real benefit to this play compared to the other play is number one, you have a three wreck hook which is um, the middle linebackers in a three wreck. So he's gonna follow any crossing receivers. It's a, it's, a, it's a much better version of a yellow zone than the regular hook zones. Regular hook zones don't really follow as well. But uh, essentially all you have to do with this play now is zone all linebackers, which is super quick and easy. And now you have one linebacker who's gonna cover, he's gonna cover crossers a lot better, and you have hook curls flooding the middle, which to me is a really good way to go. It's also not a bad idea to just double Mabel on both sides, which is a trick that a lot of people know about. We basically just hard flat these outside defenders. If I do this, I mean, this is my best opportunity. I want to center this guy, by the way, but this is my best opportunity. If I'm, if I'm not good in coverage and I want to use our defensive lineman, I can do that. Um, and that's something where I feel like my coverage is just going to be there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I typically, if I run a defense like this, if I'm going full coverage, a lot of times I'll basically take a defensive end and drop back with them if they're passing a lot so I can get on some crossers as well. But you can see nothing's open. I mean, this is basically just clam city as Camden still almost got sacked on a two-man rush and he's got to take off so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna put one of these guys into a vert hook and we'll leave one guy in a three wreck just to show you the difference and what they do so I'm gonna go I'm gonna be over here I'm gonna be uh, Baker I'm just gonna basically cover this is a crossing play which typically the vert hooks will do a little bit of a better job following as you can see he does right there and then Cam's gonna complete it but let's go to the replay to see what the difference was See, me personally, I think it's good to do the full uh, coverage version where you have both. But let's see what the two guys did. So the vert hook, number one, this guy here, he gets beat off the line a little bit, but he follows back a lot further, which is good when it comes to uh, cover threes because he's covering the cover three seam. He's going all the way down the field. Where this here, this guy here, the, the three wreck, he's probably much better for drags. So you can see on a deep crosser, he gets to the middle, he gets to a spot, he follows it to a certain extent, but then he stops. It if it was a shallower route, he would follow it a lot further. So that's something to, to keep in mind. But for cover threes, it's best to have this guy because ultimately he's just gonna follow the play a lot longer and take away any cover three scene beaters, which is probably one of the biggest issues when it comes to cover three. Now we have something where, um, you know, we, we should see a little bit more from this three rack hook. So we're gonna have him in the middle because typically he's gonna run to the middle and we don't want him to be out of position. And now you can see he follows that drag the whole way across which is something that typical vert hooks won't do. So you really have the best of both worlds if you run this play, like I'm saying, if you put both of these guys into vert hooks, um, you really have, you know, you have your seams covered because the vert hooks will follow the seam beaters. And then as long as you align this guy, you'll have any drags or any short routes covered, which is gonna be the majority of plays you see. You also have the option, since there's only one receiver over here, to do something like a hard flat or a double Mabel on this side is gonna be unreal because now he's gonna take away the running back uh, the crosser will be taken away by the tight end and the vert hook will take away everything else. So you really have a great combination of zones to take away any any type of defense or any type of offensive play. The next play is the cover two man. Now this play here, typically I would want to set my coaching adjustments, uh, which you can't really do in practice to, you know, this is another meta move that people have been doing for a long time. You're gonna to wanna to set your, your your zones, your curl flats, or your flats to 20 to 25 yards. Like I said, I can't do that here, but if in a game, I would do that. So basically, when I pick the cover two man, we'll keep going with, um, we'll go ahead with the, with the PA crossers. Oh no, we'll just keep going random. Random, triple C, flex. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit Y triangle twice, hit LB, and then we're gonna hit um, the left stick to the right, 
Same thing with the other side. You can see now he's in a curl flat. Then we're gonna do the same thing. Double, double Y, double triangle, A, and then left stick to the right again. And now we have basically, um, you know, this is something people have been doing for a very long time. Like I said, this formation, you can run all the metas from this formation. This is something that people have been doing for a very long time where they basically just take away crossers and this will also take away outside routes and stuff like that. Uh, basically, you know, leaving me with this guy here. This will be my user now. I wish it was Jerome Baker. I, I could flip that and make uh, Jerome Baker my guy because I'd rather him because of the speed but ultimately um, this is going to be the look now I'm not even sure if this is messed up entirely because the diagram is messing up now it doesn't look like that slot receiver is going to get covered but let's go ahead and let's do this yeah he got covered so like I said he's he got he had the advantage too against a slower linebacker but you can see not a lot of things are going to be open and it can be a really easy setup once you get used to it. it takes two seconds like I said guessing pass is another thing that I would do um, I sometimes I'll use this guy just to give myself a little bit more pressure but you know in a formation like this he could easily easily jump the flats to that running back which is you know table route is very very popular here so you can see he's already on that and like I said I'm just using all across the board here I can take away all these crossers there's nothing really open here and then we had a double team on that receiver and Cam dumps it down so there's multiple multiple meta options here when it comes to this formation that you can run all game uh, and there's more things you can do too I'm not even done yet this is just the first thing this is probably one of the more popular things you can see right there but you can take that you can get a couple yards you're not going to get much more than that that's the point there's not a lot of things that are going to uh, beat this particular defense unless you have a straight up speed disadvantage uh, I was accidentally messed it up if you have a straight speed disadvantage you might run into some problems um, I also shift my defensive line which is something I mentioned in run, in run defense videos you typically in, in this look you want to shift the defensive line to the left to try to take away any inside zone uh, possibilities but you can see I mean I can take away all these short things and there's just nothing open here and Cam Newton's basically throwing another interception um, as everything's getting blocked down so that's pretty much you know that's as good as it gets now there are a few more things you can do to, to kind of borrow off the last concept a lot of times I like to take this guy here this this additional uh, blitzer and I it, like I said now I'm using him as my my coverage responsibility but I could also put him into a hard flat I could also put him into a hook curl and then like I said I could use her this defensive end or somebody else because I don't typically care if I have two rushers I'll take two rushers so now I have an additional defender so if there's crossers he can help me now there's also another really good blitz out of this uh, which is the three Sam SS blitz now this is another play that I put out in a scheme a long time ago with the original Sam three wheel blitz. Uh, this particular play works the same as you know whether it's man or zone. You could also use the one Sam SS blitz, but I really feel like the the three Sam SS blitz is probably the better of the two. So obviously you're going to lose coverage if you go with the with the one Sam. So let's go and let's pick the three Sam on the defensive side or the offensive side once again. We'll just go random again. So this guy he walks himself down but that's typically not enough you want to take him down a little bit more and you want to be on him you want to be using him when you make your adjustments now i didn't even get the get the full adjustments in there hopefully we'll get uh, a good result regardless but i wasn't even ready there we still only gave him a couple yards but either way you want to be on him to use her. The reason for that is because when you make your adjustments, if you don't, he'll walk back. But if you're on him, you can control that a little bit better. So I want to bring him down like that. Then I want to shift my defensive line, which once again is L is R1 or RB, and then left on the left stick. And then I want to make sure that um, I also slant them in that direction, which is going to be D-pad uh, left and then left again so that they're basically just going over as much as possible slant them to the to the to the left so that's going to give me as much uh opportunity as possible to get that that safety in off the blitz then i'm basically just going to this will be my user put him on a blitz bring him over here close enough that i try to shift the entire defensive line in my direction and then i'm going to drop back into coverage you can see that safety just comes right off the edge and gets a very easy sack now, because your opponent might start to see this safety come down and they might expect the blitz, you could easily man him to the running back because I'm sure that'll be the next step that they do is try to hit the running back in the flat under the cover three. That's something you can do. You don't have to leave him in the blitz, but there's a lot of different things you can do. So we'll go ahead and we'll reset that play because I already messed it up. But ultimately, that's that's a, you have a couple different options. And, you know, this they're all really going to have success. So let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, we're trying to get a blitz out of this. Uh, we're trying to get some uh, some heat coming off. The closer I am to the defense or to the offensive line, the better, because I want them to shift in my direction. You can see they give my free runner there. He barely gets the ball to the running back, but that's what, like I said, you could also, you know, you could hard flat. You could do any number of things really, but just make sure that you get on this um, this safety here 
to, uh, you know, so he doesn't run back because that'll cost you time that you might not have. So before you make your adjustments, make sure you get onto that safety so that you can you can basically keep him from running back, uh, which is something stupid I think Madden needs to change as we all, as we kick that free runner every time. And like I said, the running back then becomes the next biggest issue. But do that one more time, just try to get one more sack out of this. Like I said, you gotta be on this safety or he's gonna run back. EA put that in specifically because of blitzes like this. It might have been because of this blitz. This is a very popular blitz several years ago, uh, and that might be the reason that that um, that that does that, that you have that double shift. There, you didn't get the best angle. I would say, honestly, the best, you know, you really have to place the safety in the right spot. For him to um, really have success, he really can't be too close to the line. If he's too close to the line, he doesn't really get good pressure, he doesn't really loop in quick enough. Uh, but you can see there's definitely a lot of things here as he loops in good there again. But like I said, you really have to choose whether you want to man up this running back or send him on a blitz. Other than that, the formation is the 2-4-5 out of the nickel. You can find this on a lot of different formations. On the plan, I'm going to show you guys, you can probably find out of a lot of different defense of playbooks as well and that's the buck slam three a couple years ago the buck slam three was like one of the meta uh plays when it comes to defense and it's still one of the best blitzes in the game especially if you're going against somebody who likes to block their running back um this is a really good blitz against defenses like that now you just want to make sure that your slot corner is one of your fastest cornerbacks or safeties and then you also want to make sure that uh, this guy here i mean i typically have at least one linebacker that can stay in the formation typically my user uh baker's pretty fast but you can put a safety at these linebacker spots so if you want to you could run uh, uh, all safeties uh, and all cornerbacks uh, if you have enough if you play you know mutt typically that'd probably be the best idea so if you have a lot of extra safeties you can always put them at these linebacker spots now as far as my audibles go i would definitely have cup for quarters in there that's probably gonna be my best run defense overstorm brave is probably going to be one of the better uh all out man blitzes uh the nickel blitz too is a video like i said i put that out not too long ago it's good outside run defense it's also a very good blitz i'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check that out and then the bucks land three which is what i'm going to go over today the bucks land three like i said this is probably the best blend of run and pass defense and blitz you really can get uh the most bang for your buck out of this play and you're only really going to be sending five defenders so this will be the four plays if you guys want to see a full scheme out of this playbook hit the like button let me know in the comment section so we're gonna go we're gonna pick the bucks land three on offensive side we're just gonna go random bunch now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at aoeh.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up and support the channel at the same time all you have to do is check them out and use discount code email that's right they changed it up they're actually giving you guys six percent off right now now, if you use discount code email rather than my traditional uh, discount code, which was money. So if you want to get 6% off, use discount code email, you get 6% off everything on their website. Now, one of the best ways to run this to me is slant your defensive line inside. And then you want to want to put your X uh, defensive end on a bluff blitz. That's all I'm really going to do. Then I'm going to bring my, my, my user here, put him on a blitz, come right over the center. And I'm going to work my way back into the left once the play starts. Because I want to basically pull away uh, from this cornerback. You see, we actually get two guys in. That's one of the things about this play is you have two looping pressure blitz plays. Now, one of the things that makes uh, blocking so good in Madden these days than in previous years is the ability for linemen to switch uh, defensive linemen and blitzers off. They basically pass them off from one guy to the next. And that's really what makes this play so glitchy. Is there's so much chaos going on over on this side that a lot of times they'll make too many switches because they don't know what they're looking at. So you're going to watch Brown here. He switches off. He basically passes off the first guy. Then he passes off the second guy to nobody because he expects the running back to be available, I guess. The running back takes out the cornerback, but you can see how Brown here, like he doesn't know what's going on. He just basically does a double switch and ends up blocking nobody. He just lets the linebacker get straight through. So a lot of times the cornerback will come in unblocked, especially if there's no running back blocking. But if the running back is blocking, a lot of times they'll switch to a point where they basically just let the linebacker come in free, making this one of the glitchier blitzes in the game. So slant aside, like I said, that's all you gotta do. And we're gonna bluff, bluff our, our defensive end, come over the center, create chaos and like i said i'm just going to basically back away to the left and just let these switches happen <laughs> boom the cornerback comes in straight because we had no blitz we had no running back block in that time that's typically the way that it goes so slant inside which is like i said i think i said in the original you're going to do up on the right sticks down the right stick slant side then we're going to bluff blitz come right over the center with our user and like i said this will help in, in passing and running plays as well and we're just going to basically just drop out there we actually it looked like we had like three guys like i didn't cover well because I, I i tried to cover the running back late it looks like we have number one they let the defensive end go again look at this there's three guys i thought it was a, i thought they were running a screen play for a second because i saw there's three guys coming unabated to the quarterback 
<laughs> I literally thought it was a screenplay. I was like, oh, here comes the screenplay. And then boom, they got three guys coming in on the same play. So we're gonna do that one more time. Like I said, slant inside because ultimately we're trying to create havoc inside. We're trying to force this defensive, this offensive line to create a lot of switch pressure. And that's basically why I'm coming down right over the center here because, and I, it even works better if I get this arrow pointing in this direction. That's kind of important. So guest pass is one of the things I keep forgetting to do, but we're gonna create a lot of switches here by basically backing away. We actually got a run play, which like I said, because I'm creating so much havoc, guys come free a lot of times, the run's gonna get stuffed a lot in the direction of these shotgun plays. That's pretty much just how it works. So one more time we're gonna slant inside gonna put our guy on a bluff and we're just gonna come down right over this center like I said if I could have this uh, this arrow pointing in this direction I think that's bonus points and then guess pass because I keep forgetting the guess pass so let's go let's do this hopefully I mean I'm guessing pass I'm still having a lot of success on run Woo! defense and then we get the cornerback that was another play where the running back was blocking because I saw he took out the a gap guy like I said this a gap guy does get picked up on the play action by the running back so once again five rushers six linemen this the center's blocking nobody that's on me like I said that's part of the reason I I, I just play patty cake with him I press on him and go and he's blocking nobody so we have I mean at the very least look we have two guys blocking I didn't even see win over there wins blocking nobody and that's about the that's what the bluff blitz is for the bluff blitz is for him to basically just get this left tackle blocking nobody. So left tackle blocking nobody. The center is blocking nobody. We have six blockers, five rushers, and somehow we still get a guy coming in free. That's why this is one of the best blitzes in the game. There's a lot of other things you can do too. Like if you want to slide the defense or shift the defense in the direction of the blitzing cornerback, um, if you want to, you know, you can pinch the defense, although that brings the quarterback down, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, but this is pretty much, you know, you can try things like this to try to get even more switches inside and more pressure. Although there, obviously, shifting is going to help with the run defense as well. If you want to shift the entire defense in the direction of the, uh, the blitzing quarterback, I find that can have some success. But if you're going to do that, I feel like you really have to come all the way over here to try to bring the uh, the offensive line, uh, spread them as much as much as you can. Because ultimately, this is going to be more about that cornerback. As you can see there, he got him free. We get an easy interception because Mac Jones just basically threw it up into a crowd. But that was all because of the blitzing cornerback. And it looked like we had the blocking running back once again, but it didn't matter. The blocking running back picked up that A-gap one more time. As you can see, the cornerback's coming in free. He's right in Mac Jones's ear. And you can see, once again, we got two guys blocking nobody. Because, like I said, this is one of the glitchiest blitzes in the game. You have the entire left side of the offensive line because of me. And because of the uh, the bluff blitz, just standing around with their hands in their pockets while this cornerback comes in free. If that cornerback was faster, he probably would have got the sack. I keep shifting my D and keep doing it this way. Like I said, it, 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 bottom line is we're always getting free guys. That's the thing. We're always getting at least Woo! one free guy. There, the cornerback actually stops. The formation itself was the two four five nickel. This is another blitz out of my Dolphins slash Giants ebook. Link in the description if you guys want to check that out. And the play itself is the nickel blitz two. Now, I pretty much just use this as a scheme. I mean, you have some really good man blitzes like the Overstorm Brave. Um, you know, I'm going to show you guys a full scheme. But first, we're going to start off with the nickel blitz two. On the offensive side, we're just going to go uh, with something. We'll go with the gun bunch because obviously a ton of people use that. So we'll go with that. As always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsor, AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your team up and support this channel at the same time, every time you click that link in the description and get coins from them, you support this channel. So I really appreciate you guys for doing that. And as far as the setup goes, the only thing you really have to do is blitz this guy here and bring him right down this gap between the guard and the center. If you come over here a little bit, sometimes it helps to get the cornerback off. If you come over here a little bit further, sometimes it helps to get the defensive end off on the other side so you have some control over what you want to or you know who you want to get in free uh, there you can see the cornerback came in free any additional coverage adjustments I would make I'd probably go over the top sometimes I run my cornerbacks at 25 yards so they don't get beat with streaks um, I also like the base line, show blitz, and base line just so the safeties come down. Because any crossers, the safeties are pretty much going to, um, you know, they're going to get in the way a lot better of early throws. And that's really what I'm counting on is early throws based off the fact that this defense uh, typically gets pressure pretty quick. So we'll go ahead one more time. Like I said, corner comes in free, and we get a sack. A lot of times, defensive end will come off also. I'm guessing everybody went out on a pattern. This guy here will get in a lot of times opposite uh, pass blocking running back. But you can see him. It's a five on five and we're getting instant pressure. Um, so that's something that, you know, obviously I will take all game. And then, you know, you have to be aware of things over the middle. I mean, I really went to the outside because that's one of the weaknesses. Uh, but there's really not a lot open here. I mean, this is, you know, based off of this pressure, what's really going to get open in that amount of time? I typically want to make sure I have my fastest cornerback outside here, which I really don't have right now. Um, so that's something to be aware of. So 
spell is this one more time. I can also pinch this guy here, pinch the defensive line just to try to pull more spacing away. And then we get that instant pressure again. As you can see, the quarterback gets hit, gets an incomplete pass. So there's a lot of different things. The pinching really would probably help most against the run because if it's going to be an inside run, I keep forgetting to guess pass too, but if it's going to be an inside run, that's typically going to be um, you know, where it's going to go. And then you can see, like I said, the pressure, the, the, the coverage streaks aren't there post-patch. Like the, the, the safeties play a lot better post-patch. So you can see we have very good coverage over the top. I'm guessing the pressure got in here. As you can see, we get pressure off that cornerback. But ultimately, like I said, even with these safeties pressed and playing down, pre-patch, they would get roasted by this. And you can see even, even, even the cornerback is on top of it. So it's like he tries to go up top of the street. That's just not there anymore when it comes to cover two. Gotcha, bitch. Like I said, right there. I mean, like I said, cover two zone, definitely one of the better uh, post-patch defenses. It does a much better job of taking away deep routes. I said, you can really go any number of gaps. Woo! We get an instant A gap that time based off the fact that we, we moved that, uh, that blitzer over. Like I said, I already showed you can go over the center. If I come over on this side, you can see right here, it actually lets the A gap through. Or not the A gap, it's more like a B gap, but still, he lets that guy go through and then he basically picks up the cornerback. So there's a lot of different things you could do by basically you know, moving along the line. So baseline, show blitz, baseline is pretty much my favorite setup there. So I'll keep coming over here and then I'll basically just guess pass. That's the most important part. Like I said, occupy that guard. You can see that cornerback comes around the running back and the tackle on that play for an instant sack. Like I said, this isn't necessarily um, the fastest cornerback. I said I typically want my fastest cornerback or my best cornerback. I don't even know if that's a cornerback. That might be a safety. I have no idea who that guy is. But on this play here, he just comes ripping around the play action and the tackle, which, like I said, the, the, if typically it'll happen this way. If the running back is on the other side, which you typically want to run this blitzer off the edge opposite the running back, he'll get around that running back, even if the running back's blocking. So this is a five man on six. Uh, blockers and he still gets right around it and at the end of the play you got two guys blocking nobody so baseline show blitz baseline let's do it one more time it doesn't really matter what what gap you come down into like i can come all the way over here and it should have the same success it's just going to pull the line over and you see that cornerback is coming off the edge like lightning speed again cam newton doesn't stand out with mac jones i'm still expecting cam newton to be out here so like i said just really fast pressure off the blitz it doesn't matter what gap you you stand in front of um, I just find that, you know, sometimes you get pressure a little bit quicker. I find the most success was staying down in the gap next to this guy. But uh, you can get it from pretty much anywhere. So I got two more plays for the scheme. But like I said, this particular play is not necessarily the best. So that plays a really good blitz. It's a really good uh, outside run defense because of the blitzing cornerback. But it's not a very good inside run defense. So you're always going to want to have that in your audibles. I would say my audible setup would look something like this. Where I'm going to have the nickel blitz too. I'm going to have... Um, the where is it out here? The cover four quarters, and I also have the overstone brave. I just want to send the house at the middle, and the cover two man. Those are the four plays that I would run the most. As far as the uh, the best run defense is definitely the cover four quarters. So let's pick that. We're gonna force uh, some inside runs. We'll just go ahead and pick um, halfback base. Let's play here. Be baseline show blitz baseline again. Your safeties will come down the box, and your cornerbacks won't. Your cornerbacks won't get to the point where they're just gonna get roasted. If you do that, and you don't guess pass. These safeties will do a really good job of stopping the run, or at least playing the run first, compared to, you know, cover twos, they don't. They just drop back right away. So, I mean, this is something where, you know, you can basically just have uh, success uh, more if you just basically run the cover four and just, you know, basically bring the safeties down to the box. They'll just, just do a much better job of stopping the run. As you can see right there, the safety comes down and fills. But any other defense, these safeties drop back right away. Cover four, they walk down to the box. And they basically just play the run uh, like linebackers. So this is, you know, it's like having additional linebackers in the field. You just want to make sure you rock this cover four against any run. Anybody that's running the ball a lot, have this in your arsenal. So I'm going to do it again. Baseline, show blitz baseline. And shift your defense to that side too. Because if it's going to be a run, it's going to be a, an inside zone or something like that. And then, like I said, you just have the safety just play the run much better. The formation itself is the 2 3 6 Sam. It's also known as the dollar formation. Some playbooks will have the dollar, some playbooks will have the 2 3 6 Sam. I think it really depends on whether you're in a 3 4 playbook or a 4 3 playbook. Now, as far as the four plays I would have in my audibles, I would definitely have the cover two man as one of them. That's one of the best uh, defenses when it comes to pass defense. It's all out pass defense. No real pressure you're going to get, but you'll have a lot of good coverage on the backside. You want to get 
get a little bit of pressure. I'm going to step it up a little bit. And this is definitely going to be the base defense for me. Uh, the number one defense in this formation, in my opinion, is the DB fire too. This is going to be the defense I go over the most. Then if you got a run defense, the cover four drop would be the best run defense in the formation. And then the last defense would be the cover three lock. It's a very unique coverage to this formation. Uh, this here is going to be something I'm not sure if I'll show here or if I'll be on my Patreon and join our community tab and stuff like that. But definitely these will be the four plays that I would run. There's also a lot of really good blitzes to be found out of the dime one four six. A lot of good blitzes. So if you guys want to see Woo! more uh, defenses out of this playbook, more blitzes out of this playbook, hit the like button as always. Other than that, it's going to start off with the DB fire too. On the offensive side, we're just going to go with uh, random. We'll go and we'll pick something uh, kind of metal. We'll go random gun bunch. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your MUT team up and support this channel at the same time, all you have to do is check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEY to get 3% off. It's always the cheapest coins on the market. Now, as far as this setup goes, I mean, I hit random gun. I don't know what happened. It gave me just random whatever. But this is actually perfect. A formation like this, because they're, they're disguised really well. These cornerbacks are disguised to a point where it looks like they're going to be uh, covering their users i like to bring them in just a little bit but an empty backfield look like this is even better because all i really have to do i'm going to choose whatever side has the least receivers and i'm going to blitz this guy here and bring him down uh, into the gap this is basically what's going to get my free rusher in. i'm not going to stay here very long i got to drop back immediately and take away uh 16's uh, you know the, the slot receiver on the left there but this is pretty much it you don't really have to do anything i like to slant my guys outside uh, my defensive line a lot of time although here it does doesn't even look to really make a difference but there we go now i guess it didn't work out the first time this will help to get these in my opinion i mean it works either way but this will help to get these uh these outside cornerbacks off the edge even easier so i'm gonna go ahead i mean i could do a lot of coverage adjustments and pinch my defense bring these safeties down a lot of times because you know a short passing uh concept is pretty much going to be what you need to beat this defense you get also hard flat stuff like that uh, this is pretty much going to be uh, the base setup and your defense can look something like this now your safeties you know you can leave them back there's a lot of different things you can do the only other thing i would say is make sure you guess pass guess pass is going to be one of the things that i do just about every single time so let's go ahead and let's take this off so the, the offense can run their play now like i said i'm not staying home long gotta get back and you can see both the cornerbacks come off the edge extremely quick and get a sack from both of them really a very interesting result we got on the first play um there's five guys blocking and i'm only sending five only three guys actually engage and block somebody. We get two free defenders in, which is something you're going to see a lot in a formation like this. Like I said, it's one of the best blitzes in the game. So this left tackle here, he has to make a quick decision uh, whether he should take this defensive end right in front of him or the cornerback. He chooses the cornerback. And then, for whatever reason, I guess I pulled the guard really well. Guards are a lot slower than tackles. I pull the guard really well if I can get on the guard, uh, which, like I said, sometimes is tough with this uh, replay system. But this guard here, I guess he was too slow to rotate because he's reacting to me immediately and then by the time I back away he's too slow to rotate on this defensive end so this defensive end just gets right past the guard if we go to the other guard he's over here blocking nobody as well as you can see this cornerback also gets in free but he doesn't get the a gap pressure the defensive end does but he is I also forgot to mention you want to put your fastest cornerback at these spots I got Byron Jones who I think it's like a 96 speed cornerback coming off the edge it's gonna be a huge advantage so here we have a look where we have a, uh, a running back in the backfield which is gonna be typical whenever you have a running back in the backfield this guy here, he has a much lesser chance to get pressure than the guy on the other side. Because this guy on the other side here, um, even if the running back is on a pass block, if it's a play action, he won't be able to turn around quick enough to, to take away this, this blitzer. And even if it isn't a play action, a lot of times he won't be able to rotate over to pick up this blitzer. So you're going to want to set the defense for that guy. So all I'm going to do is basically uh, user the gap over the running back to make sure that that guy really gets the attention, or at least the line will shift in my direction. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to do my setup again. Slant outside for my defensive line. Uh, guess pass is pretty much all I have to do and then come down to this uh, gap here. I can do a lot of other things like hard flatting, which I did. Um, I could press my you know, my entire defense, all that stuff, but that's really up to you. So as far as this play goes, like I said, the running back does go out on a pattern, and you can see right there we get an easy sack off the edge. Hopefully I'll get some looks where the running back is blocking. A couple things about this uh, defense that I like. Number one, I think cover two is one of the better defenses in the game right now, and I've said that multiple times. I think a lot of people feel like cover two is really one of the best ones to play um so that's something but you will not stop the run very well that's something you have to keep in mind this is not a good run defense here i spread the defensive line out a little bit that should help as well 
uh, but this is pretty much all you're gonna do like i said this is something where if it's a run play it's gonna gash me anyway so it doesn't really matter i'll show you guys a run defense here in a minute out of this formation but ultimately it doesn't really um doesn't really matter so like i said dropping back on this tight end it's really open we get the cornerback off the other side i don't know if the running back was on a pass block there or not so on this play the running back was blocking we spread our defensive alignment even further and you're going to see how that has uh, another add effect when it comes to these linemen trying to switch off so here we go once again left tackle comes out he chips on the uh the defensive end to try to pass him to the guard but then the cornerback just runs right past him and he doesn't block anybody so ultimately once again you have uh switch issues when it comes to the speed of these cornerbacks although the running back was blocking he does pick up his cornerback which is like i said you always want to make sure you, you the guy coming off the opposite side of the running back will be the one that gets the pressure every single time because number one they just don't see it coming from this side of the field and number two even if they do they can't rotate over quick enough to pick it up but you can see we still get very easy pressure as this is one of the best blitzes in the game so I'm going to go ahead and move on to a run defense. But before I do, I just want to show you guys a couple of things when it comes to these safeties. Now, I know that I was doing a lot of baseline show blitz, baseline setups where these safeties might come in. If you have court receivers out wide like this, you can't hard flat and have these safeties in. A lot of times I'm hard flatting. If you're going to hard flat, you got to have these safeties out wide to take to take away any possible streaks from 84 or 15, these outside receivers. Streaks can kill this defense um, easy streaks if the safeties are out of position. So make sure they're out wide enough to take that away. But other than that, I mean, this is a very easy defense to set up. If you make, if you if you know where the the pitfalls are, you can easily uh, account for them. So we had to force pick a run play. We picked the inside zone. Obviously, a very popular uh, running concept out of most gun formations. Probably the most popular. Um, just to show you guys that number one, this will not stop the run successfully. So we're just going to go. We're going to run it as we were. Although I don't know why it's not letting me get off my safety. This game's been really buggy since the last patch. Uh, you have to pause sometimes just to get that ability back. But like I said, let's say we're setting this up the same way. Uh, you're just going to see here, it's not typically going to shut down a lot of inside runs because of a couple reasons. Number one, I mean, it gets to the safeties right away. The safeties are the issue when it comes to cover two. Number one, they play too far back. Let's go to the replay. They play too far back to start the play. But number two, they also drop back immediately. Unless you guess run, which is a huge mistake, they will typically drop back on their heels and be out of position to make any type of play there's an easy counter for that so a great counter for that is going to be the cover four quarters now all i'm going to do is baseline show blitz baseline once again i'm going to user these safeties a little bit bring them in a little bit tight so that they can be right in the area um, where you know an inside zone run would be and this is basically going to be your look if you don't guess pass which is not, not something you're going to want to do now you're going to see how these guys do a much nope. better job of stopping the run that was a safety catching the running back about two yards after the ball is snapped let's go and let's watch the replay like I said, much different when it comes to cover fours. Cover fours, the safeties will play down in the box and fill these run lanes better than any safeties in the game. Cover three, cover two, they all typically drop back. But in cover four, if you don't guess pass, they walk right up in the box and they will take away these run lanes uh, very well, as you can see right here. I mean, he stops them two yards deep, and we have a very successful run defense. And the setup couldn't be easier. Wide triangle, uh, right on the left stick, then wide triangle, left on the left stick, then wide triangle, right on the left stick again. So real easy setup. Baseline, show blitz, baseline. Like I said, I'm gonna bring my safeties where I want them because I know that they're the reason that this, this defense would stop the run in the first place. You can also hard flat. If you think it might be an outside run, hard flatting can help that. But ultimately, this is your setup, and then you can see, I mean, there's nope. just not a lot of run room here. This is the formation right here, the 245 double A gap. There's tons of different double A gaps. It pretty much works the same in all of them. Uh, the only real you know, thing that you're gonna have to make sure that you have a, on a scheme like this, you wanna make sure you have your fastest outside linebackers in these two spots. Number one, I already have uh, Van Genkel. I don't even know who that guy is, but he's an A6 speed, so he'll get done. On the other side, we're gonna wanna put Shaq Griffin, because he's a 91 speed, so we'll go ahead and we'll put him there. And those are gonna be the two most important positions for two reasons, really. Number one, I'm gonna be using one of them and the other one's going to be getting the pressure so it's really all about those two guys the rest of these guys don't matter so if you have fast defensive ends you know say you got josh sweat or something you can take them out put them out of one of these outside linebacker spots for this particular play it doesn't really matter but i would also try to make sure that they have speed and catching because like i said you're going to be using one of these guys so the play itself or at least the first play it's the mid blitz everybody knows about this play the first time i put this play out was probably back in like madden 19 or madden 20 it was a completely different setup back then the setup 
setup that I use now is probably a little bit easier and it's a little bit more consistent. But I'll show you a couple different setups against a couple different offenses because there's a lot of different ways to run this. You can really run this setup, I'm going to show you too, out of just about any of these plays. Like I could run it out of the Buck Zone Blitz. I might show that a little bit later on. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys a full scheme because there's a couple of really good blitzes that come out of the 2 for 5 double A gap. Now before getting this video, as always, this video is brought to you by Coin Sponsor, AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and you want to support this channel at the same time, do me a favor, check them out. Link in the description below and just discount code money get 3% off with already some of the cheapest coins on the market. Now as far as this play goes, like I said, there's a couple of different setups you can do. Number one, I used to do this where I would blitz this guy here, bring him down into the box and basically just hover this center. Uh, I don't typically get picked up on the, on you know, he doesn't typically pick me up on the blitz, but I can do this and basically drop right back into coverage. This is a decent setup. It still works pretty good. You're also going to make sure that these safeties are closer to their assignments. If I do this this setup here, I always want to guess pass too, because that's going to be one of the most important things to make sure that these uh, defensive ends don't bite on the play action. But guess pass, that's important. And the last thing you can do if you want to is spread the defensive line, which you can see is just going to basically, um, you know, get these outside linebackers in a, a little bit uh, better spacing so that they get avoided by any, you know, any of the tackles. So this is something you can do. So you're going to get a lot of pressure doing that, but that's not typically the way I like to do it anymore. They said this is something you can do. I still do it from time to time. They say you just want to make sure that you get that safety down. I'll go ahead and I'll bring this guy back. Like I said, this is real simple. Just guess pass. I hover the center because it's going to basically make all these linemen come in quickly and they can see you're going to get instant pressure that way. But it's still, like I said, there's a better way to do it where you have a little bit more coverage. Now let's say that we're going to do that first setup against something where the running back's gonna go out in a pattern, like the double in sale. So that's why I prefer this second setup, especially against an offense like this, where I'm just gonna walk these safeties down once again. And then I don't have to really do anything other than just bring this guy over and basically uh, and put it, you know, once again, guess pass, because that's the most important part, but just bring this guy over to the defensive end is all I really have to do to get that other defensive end off the edge free. So now give me the opportunity to drop down to the running back, drop into the tight end, whatever. You can see the quick pass is still there, but that's something that, you know, the computer's going to do. The, your, your opponent isn't always going to do that. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, walk these safeties down. That's probably the most important part of the setup. Bring this guy over. You always want to bring in the guy that's over the running back because even if he's pass blocking, this other outside linebacker will typically get around that running back anyway, either via the play action or just based off of the pass protection. As you can see right there, like I said, that's something where man coverage will typically take away that table route. They won't get much. So a lot of times to eliminate those quick throws, I'll just press. I'll just bring everybody down, take away those short routes. And now you'll see how, you know, basically all the short throws will be will be swallowed up and Cam Newton is going to be getting taken sacks because, you know, all the short routes are taken away if you take away the space. So now the exact same play. I'm still able to drop back into coverage and we get an instant free man off the side here. You can see we almost get some A-cap pressure too because the, because 71, almost it looks like he lets his guy go because he, he kind of thinks he's got to come around to pick up uh, the outside edge rusher, but it doesn't really matter. You have a five on five. I typically, you, know, you get a free man and I typically get to get back. I mean, I, I'm, it's almost a sack by the time I get back into coverage, but you can see I'm back into coverage and I have the ability to take away crossers, take away short stuff, which is really all you have to do at this point. If you find that um, they're not coming off the edge and picking you up, you can just use your blitz right in too. As you can see right here, I mean, I'll just be in the backfield and just plant the quarterback. So it's just a straight sprint. So that's something where I feel like they might have tried to patch this a little bit based off the fact that, um, I mean, I know I've been using it in a lot of game plays, uh, but you can basically just do that. If they don't pick you up, you can just go ahead and sprint right in. Like I said, there's a ton of different ways to do this. You can see we're just, we're getting instant sacks if they don't, if they decide not to pick up. So against an empty backfield look, this is the exact same look. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna pick the side that has the most receivers. There's three on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this guy free off the left side. I'm gonna drop back into that tight end. That's gonna be the easiest way to do this. Also have the option to drop back against the, um, you know, there we got, I mean, I could have tried to drop into that drag, but I'm really trying to take away the inside release. I'm sure we had free pressure. Like I said, this is the same thing. You wanna take away the short throws, you just gotta bring everybody down. But this is something where, you know, I don't recommend necessarily running this a lot against empty backfields, but it's something you can do if you get stuck in that look. So you can see right there, we get that sack, we take away that crosser. It's going to be the exact same look, and it's pretty much a five on five pressure. So that's a real easy play. We get a ton of sacks, uh, but you could also do that exact same trick with plays like the Buck Zone Blitz. So I like the cover three variation out of this because the seam flat here is way better than the curl flat, in my opinion. So all I have to do is blitz all, 
guest pass and then bring this guy in we're gonna have the exact same success that we had on the previous play and then i'm gonna become the three rec hook so once again i gotta take away that tight end once the play starts and then you can see here i mean there's nothing really the curl flat is we get another interception there the curl flat does a much better job of following uh its receivers as you can see i don't think i got the pressure but this is a good play to mix in because you can see right here this guy here he doesn't necessarily force to go outside he takes away the, the, the drag that's something that curl flats do i'm sorry that uh, seam flats do that curl flats don't do it looks like he has to be an under route but he takes away the crossing route which is one of the reasons that this play is much better than typical cover threes once again a bunch of different ways that we can run this defense a bunch of different ways that we can get pressure I prefer typically to do it the um, you know do, do it this way. This play might work better uh, because the running backs in the play action to do it like this. You can see we get that, that pressure right off the bat on the other side. You know you can run it so many different ways. That's why I like this defense. Your opponent they might try to um, you know do something like. Uh, shift their defensive line in the direction or run in the direction away from where you're, you're you know bring this guy in stuff like that and they can still have success because the play action just takes the running back way out of the play so if you guys want to see a bigger uh you know more detailed version of this scheme on youtube as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section or you can check it out on my ebook my defensive uh you know dolphin slash giants ebook has all these plays in already and i also have a ton of really good um you know past defenses really from all these because i'm in the dolphins playbook so hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see that other than that thanks for watching man my shit out Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.